Hi there, welcome. And I am without the audio, so we need to do it once more. Hello. <laughs> All right. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Yes, we're back. We're back in business for the Group B playoffs. Can't wait. Amazing yeah, day today. Too. How are you feeling, CB? How are you feeling? Yeah, pretty well, pretty well. Uh, I think uh, we had an amazing week last Sunday. Uh, a few hiccups, of course, but that's normal for a first, uh, first week, I think. Um, for me personally, it was great. Uh, I think most people don't know me, right? Even now, maybe. Um, I'm CB. I play on EU2 since season four. Um, I'm a commander in the, for my house. It's a small house in EU2, TDD. Um, so I've got a bit of experience, but I mostly watch a lot of tournaments for Conquest Blade, and that's where I collect, try to collect a, lo a lot of data, and that's how I am useful to you, right? And hopefully to all the viewers as well. Cool. Welcome, welcome. And if you don't know me, then well, you messed up, guys. But yeah, I'm General Combo. I played the game for quite a long time. I have casted the ARI Tournament 1 in English, and right now we are in ARI Tournament 2, Day 2 as well, so Double 2. Let's see how it will go today. So, as you know, last time we had some technical issues, we had some problems, but fortunately this time it's all sorted. But there is still a small change, unfortunately one team dropped out from today, so we will have only two teams competing today. Only, I say, right, because it's one less, but then definitely there will be a lot a lot a lot of emotions things to watch to see uh, possibly some strange turnarounds as well because this both of these teams are very high level very skilled and i cannot expect or expect unexpected maybe let's say it like that so uh -huh. definitely interesting day ahead of us okay um, we have around 26 minutes till the first game will start so we can talk a little bit about the rules and everything around it, because some of you might have not watched our previous cast, might not be up to date. So let's ensure that everyone is on the same page. So let's start with the tournament schedule. So as you can see, the ARI tournament is divided into six different days. We have four days dedicated for each group for the playoffs. And then quarterfinal and final days. Uh, dates you can see right now on the screen. Mm, the casts uh, usually will be at the same time. There might be some small change later on that we will see due to some of the teams being from North America. But uh, if there will be anything, I will make sure to inform you. CB, how do you like that the tournament right now is not one day, but six days? Yeah, I love it. I think it's so fun. Um... We got a chance to see teams playing multiple games, right? In the first R tournament, they only got to play attack or defense versus one team. And now we get to see them both on at attack and defense. And I think that's so amazing. We saw it already last week, right? With Eclaritis versus Nexus. Um, they both got, got a shot at attacking. Um, and we saw a lot of things happening there. It was amazing. So I really look forward to, to the group phase and also to the finals. That's only going to be even more interesting for sure. Definitely, definitely. So Group A we played last week. We will talk about it a little bit later as well on how the whole tournament uh, rules are. We'll talk about it in a moment. But before we do, let me tell you about the betting competition I have for all of you guys. So basically, you can place your bet one uh, like before the first game starts. So you have the, the counter you see on the screen right now in the bottom right. 24 minutes, you have 24 minutes to bet for who you think will be the first, will take the first seat out of the B group. So you have 50-50 chance, only two teams are playing today, so I guess it's uh, it's better for you guys then. But how to bet? You do exclamation mark bet on the chat, 
and the bot will PM you with all the rules you need to see and how to enter, where to enter. You just go to the Google form, provide your information, and then you enter the lottery. After the games are finished, after the cast is finished for today, I will make a short, uh, short lottery of everyone who have predicted correctly. So you can be fully aware on what's there. And for all the prizes you have listed here last week, uh, Slimboss, I believe it was, who won. 20 times hero XP card today. We today we are fighting for 20 times unit XP card. And later on there will be more prizes finishing with some special prize for the finals. And that's all about the betting. So exclamation mark bet, you enter the betting and exclamation mark help. If you want to check any information about the tournament, we will of course guide you through it in a moment, but then if you will have any more questions, exclamation mark help and over there you can check all the informations you wish so cb if you could tell us a little bit more about the group phase yeah i definitely can uh we got 12 teams or at least we used to have 12 teams right uh, we saw one team dropping out so we have 10 teams right now uh this divided over four groups uh they will be playing like we just saw in the next couple of weeks um and then we will move on with six teams to, um, or sorry, with eight teams to the quarterfinals. Um, each group will play six games. Uh, so normally today we will see four games, having uh, each team play attack and defense. Uh, and then we might have a, another game of field battle. If there is a, a tiebreaker, it will be the decider for the group. And after the field battle, we will also have a death match between the teams. Um, so we'll have one attack, one defense game for both teams. And then, like we said, the field battle tiebreaker, which was very exciting last week. Yeah, definitely. A lot to keep eye, eye on, even for today. <laughs> yeah, hard, hard to cast, but uh, we will try our best today as well, guys. So Absolutely. Don't, don't you worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so today a little bit special day. There will not be six games, as CB said, on the four, right? We will play uh, two normal games one, in, uh, games, one in attack, one in defense, on the map that will be randomly chosen. Mm -hmm. out of the pool we'll talk about in a, in a moment and uh, then we'll do the field battle as well and the death match for your viewing pleasure to have as many battles as today uh, yeah let me take a moment as well to welcome everyone hi everyone Grzybek, Lolbrok, hello guys hi it's Adam, hi Efter, hi guys welcome welcome thank you as well for following but we need to continue with the rules so yeah the rules are um... Uh, the ones that you already know, if you have watched the tournament and you should have watched the tournament. And if you haven't done it, uh, rewatch re the game we posted on Reddit. Um, it will be on uh, General's uh, YouTube channel pretty soon as well. Um, so definitely rewatch the games. Um, but we have no T5 units for our tournament. So there will only be uh, units up to, till T4 or the purple units. Uh, we've seen that it's uh, affecting the game quite a bit. Um, it's not like your usual siege or field battles. There can also be no addition, additional artillery. So the artillery that is on the maps can be used, but there will be no other artillery placed by teams. And this uh, has a big impact as well on the game compared to what you are usually used to in your own battles. We also have no doctrines. Uh, they are not allowed for uh, units to play. So the units will only be playing with their own veterancy lines. And the uh, rune system is also disabled mostly. We Players can only use the piercing green doctrine, um, which is enabled on the tournament server, but nothing else uh, has been enabled on the tournament server for the runes. And then one of the more exciting rules, I think, is three lives per player, uh, which means that once a player has died three times, they cannot rejoin the game and their units are lost for their team. Um, quite often, like last week, we only saw teams fighting two or three times in a battle, and it didn't affect the game too much, but we have seen it in other games and tournaments that it can affect the game by quite a bit. Um, what do you think about the rule in general? You've seen it being played quite a bit now. Yeah, I I really, I, I hate it. I hate it, I hate all of it because I cannot participate as I am casting. And the rules are so nice, so different from usual gameplay. Like uh, when you often see on field battles, for example, a lot of golden era cavalry, there is no more of that. And often you can, you know, enter a fort or break something very much with uh, well-placed falconetti gunners or, you know, some flamethrowers or, or whatever. 
a lot of the golden units can be a deciding factor in many of the actions you do um, during normal sieges or even territory wars, right? Here, none of that. So we have to see how the teams will think uh, differently, right? They have to adapt, they have to overcome this big difference. And, uh, and definitely the Note 5 units is the, the game changer. But artillery, you know, it also depends. Some of the teams are very heavy relying on the artillery. We, if you will be watching over the over the tournament and you recognize some of the teams from, I don't know, Territory Wars, right, where you played against them, you can see that um, teams are behaving totally different uh, on the tournament server, and I really like to watch it. So this is a very interesting thing. Absolutely. Okay, let's jump to finals bracket. Uh, this is mistake on my end. We should we were supposed to talk about group phase and then jump to finals bracket, but yeah, I misclicked. Sorry for that. So uh, about the finals phase, uh, this is quite simple thing I should say because there are eight teams advancing out of each group. We have four groups. Out of each group, two teams are advancing into the finals bracket, and in finals bracket, all games will be best of three so not only the map will be randomized but your starting position will be randomized as well and basically here will teams will be battling over in the course of two days on how we will progress further basically right so the one day will be quarterfinals only and other day will be two times semi-finals third place game and final to top it all off so very interesting final bracket uh, ah yes after very good thank you for showing that the uh, i have not enabled the yeah betting yes, yes betting is right now working so uh, you can you can join in sorry for that and uh, Beard of Kin, you missed the, the match as well. We played last week. We'll talk about the games a little bit in a moment. But I will also do re-upload re to the YouTube. And uh, this, this week I will re-upload both weeks, all the games and so on, so you can rewatch if you missed anything. And we have still one more thing to talk about, and this is maps. So, CB, could you tell us a little bit about the map? Yes, we system? can. Yes, we can. Um, so we allowed uh, all teams to ban a couple of maps, right? And then we see Duswell Fort and Valley Fortress were the victims of those bans. They will not be played. And the other three, Wall Fort, Cork, Castle, and Harbor City, will be randomized in a few minutes. Um, they will be randomly chosen, and one of them is going to be the map that we will be playing on. And we are using these bans for the entire group states. And for the finals, we will re-ban uh, the maps, and we might see different maps then as well. Definitely, definitely. And this is a big change because in Ari Tournament 1, we only used one map across the whole tournament. So this allowed teams to prepare very precisely for the map, train on it, and, and do many different things dedicated for the map only. While on Ari Tournament 2, we have a set of maps which were banned. We have a set of maps which you know can be randomly chosen from and teams have no idea no one knows what map we will be using for a given game until we will make a lottery out of it we'll draft one of the three maps six minutes or around six minutes before the game starts live here on the stream so uh, yeah teams will have a short time to prepare yeah, absolutely. And last week we saw Walford. What did you think about it, General? I think it was really interesting. We saw a few different approaches, right, for from both teams. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, good thing that both maps, uh, both matchups are played on the same map, right? So um, we will have today Lamaland and Team Kitten uh, fighting each other. So one time one team will be attacking, and other time other will be attacking so we, both teams have to prove themselves on the both ends of the wall and then definitely this is this is interesting thing to you know also see because if you have more maps you need to think about you cannot prepare so well for only one of them right so mm -hmm. this can uh, change a lot of uh, a lot of things Total. Uh, I see one chat question. So, uh, guys, uh, exclamation mark bet. Sorry, it's it's fixed right now. It's it's working. I see all of the answers are flowing in. 
So if you have not signed up yet, uh, you still have 15 minutes, around 15 minutes to do so. And uh, what's the YouTube channel uh, called? Uh, you can see it in the description. There is a YouTube logo and you click there and just go to my YouTube. And over there you can already, I mean, not today because today we are playing. So uh, you need to watch, but uh, on the course of upcoming days, you can rewatch the games from Ari Tournament 1 because there is quite a few teams who played there and will be playing still in this tournament. So you can see how the teams have adjusted, progressed, if they have learned from their mistakes and capture all of this interesting information. Okay, so let's jump to the preparation screen, I like to call it, where you can see that uh, yeah, already one of the teams were eliminated from the game. Unfortunately, Arrogant, uh, sorry, this is Group B, yeah. Unfortunately, Eden team were not able to participate. Uh, last uh, Yesterday, they informed us that they will not have enough of players. That's their official statement, what's true. You know, maybe seeing their opponents, they were scared, who knows, who knows. Uh, but definitely we have Lamaland and Kitten still in the play, fully confirmed that they will be playing with us today. So interesting matches are coming in today. So CB, can you tell us a little bit more about the teams? Just a highlight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've seen Kittens play in the Friday Night Fight uh, tournament. Uh, last year it was, um, and we haven't seen them on any other tournaments, I think, since then. At least I haven't. Um, if you have, please send me the, mess, uh, the link in the, in the chat. I would love to see it. Uh, but they were really impressive. They played in the final versus Ico. They lost in the end. But they showed great, great use of shields and pikes. Uh, the Lamalands, they are from EU1. Um, I don't know too much about them yet. Uh, we know they are a Turkish house. Uh, we know they love to play uh, with individual skill. They are really class players. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. We'll have to see what happens. Definitely, definitely. So cannot wait. 10 to 15 minutes left for the game start. So interesting things definitely in front of us. We'll also be doing the map lottery, so the map draw in a in, in few minutes. So, so stay, stay in definitely to not miss it. And uh, yeah, Beard of, of Queen asset Eden. We have added them the losses uh, because they have uh, moved out of the tournament. They are not playing, yeah. so basically, yeah, they lost all their matches by getting out of the tournament yesterday. Uh, okay, so uh, I guess uh, all the rules we discussed, right? We discussed what's in front of us today, what games we can expect. And uh, yeah, any questions, guys, from you so far? If you wish to ask, uh, there is a short delay on the stream. Def uh, I mean, this is competitive tournament, so definitely there is a, there is delay required. Um, so uh, if you will have any questions, please mark them at General Combo and write them on chat. So I will try to go through them as we speak. In the meantime, thank you all for follows. So we have Avenger, Nefedov, Amfete, LX, Foyer, XL, Stekan, Moy. Trupens, we have also Kpomkoma, holy moly, interesting names, guys. But thank you very much for following. Welcome to the Dodge family. And yeah, as we have still a few minutes left, CB, should we discuss about Group A? Yeah, I think we should. We should definitely. It was such an interesting group. Um, uh, even though one team dropped out, we saw Axelrides picking up the win. And honestly, honestly, we didn't really expect them to be the first out of this group, um, even before the, the match, because they were not doing so well in other tournaments before. They only had one win, um, but they surprised us and they, they won the games versus Nexus. Uh, Nexus came back in the second game to in actually really convincing fashion. It was one of the quickest games we've seen and they had such, such a great attack. Uh, maybe we can show the clip later on. Um, but it was so fast. They also talked to us in the post-game interview um, and said that they just really love to attack and they hate to defend. And we could see it in the matches. Um, yeah, it was such an interesting uh, day for us. Uh, what did you like the most about uh, the first day, uh, General? Uh, ooh, one thing. Uh, to pick one thing, it's hard. I think what I like the most is uh, how the 
teams utilize the map to their advantage, right? Uh, there were there were few moves and few specific actions which we captured on the highlights or, or talked through them live that were maybe not like something that is not unexpected, but this is something that is very, very rarely seen in Conqueror's Blade. Usually when you play in normal sieges, right, you can bring only a group of five people. So there is very limited amount of coordinated things you can do. And then taking uh, territory wars into consideration, you can bring 15 people through, but then you have golden era, then you have artillery, then you have many different things uh, like your resupply and whatnot, the, and the resupply of the enemy team, which you need to consider, which makes things very different, right? And here on the tournament, there is just pure competitive gameplay and pure competitive action. This is, the, yeah, we, we've seen last week some actions that I have never seen in Conqueror's Blade ever before. And this is thanks to how teams can cooperate together, how they shot colors work, how they look at the map, adjust uh, their plans, you know, take uh, pushes and do interesting stuff like that. And this was definitely something to keep an eye out moving on to the tournament as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was also very surprised by the use of Kev. We, ex of, we of course see a lot of Kev played quite often, right? We even see Sally out in tournaments. Um, but it seems like too much Kev wasn't working uh, that day. Um, and these teams are just so good in using the pike advances or using Fort Brachos to stop the cap. And uh, yeah, we could see that Army Girls Lancers that are the most played cap for, for this tournament. They didn't get as much work done quite often, but when they do manage to flank, they, they just stomp the enemy team so hard, right? It was amazing yeah. to see sometimes. Yeah, and this is this is yeah the, the meaning of cavalry changes quite a lot because Arpingers as the most used one, they are very agile, right? They can run around, they have a lot of uh, charge and move around and they come back to use skills. So they are quite quite flexible, quite agile with what they do, but indeed their damage output itself and uh, their impact on the game to like from the pure pure damage or, or health or survivability survivability perspective is not that high and uh, this is a very kind of a fragile move to bring a lot of them because you can do it well and you know crush the enemy as you said or mm -hmm. if the enemy will react faster than you and better than you then you wasted like a lot of leadership because they are not that cheap also so this is something to keep on uh, keep in mind Okay, seems like we will be jumping uh, for a moment out for the uh, lottery of the maps, so waiting for all the uh, streamers to be ready. Mm. But yeah, if you haven't uh, followed yet, you can of course join the tournament server, exclamation mark help, and over there you have all the links. In the tournament server, there is historical channel over there. You can see the uh, previous uh, previous tournament. So our tournament one replies, and we will be posting all the Ari tournament two replies to this channel as well. So you can follow along. And then we see we have also one question from Lolbrock: Will the House of CB join this tournament as well? Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, they have not decided to sign up so i guess the answer is no the signups are closed a long time already and we have a set amount of teams who will compete yeah very true they will definitely definitely not join the today for, for my house from tdd um but maybe they will on the next uh, tournament right if, if our, our tournament three goes on and and we've already seen more teams uh, joining uh, the discord for the our tournaments um so definitely if you're interested in joining um go to the discord um and follow what's going on there we also have a post and pre-game chat channel uh, there as well so um definitely keep up and um, see if you can gather a team and, and join it's so much fun to to be here i think yeah so you can you can exchange your uh, your opinions notes and you know all the things you capture as well as you can do your own clips if um, if you wish right exclamation mark clip you can use the built-in um, twitch tool right with alt x to cut some uh, highlights or clips 
or you can just write exclamation mark clip on the chat and uh, basically the uh, bot will ping you the last 30 seconds as a reply with the with the link yep. with that totally uh, meanwhile on the tournament server uh, we are loaded in there as well i can already see kittens warming up with some duels um trying to see who is the best player of them currently since we don't know too much about them we can see some of the players uh, shankusu burgut uh let's see who else do we got here samuel uh, i see aratoshima of course all right the organizer of this tournament uh Silfina, avenger um kisha pisha oh we're gonna have some trouble with the names i think uh, with some of those and from lama lamaland i see some as well here ordinarius uh codine and who else do we have avenger i think so all the players are ready they are here dueling it out before the game um yeah getting hyped i think okay uh so we will be joining for now for a moment to the um to aritoshima to make sure that the maps are drawn properly so a moment of break cb thank you we'll be back with you in a minute Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, come on. Hey. Okay, so give me give me a second to the set okay. for the setup, and we can start in the, in a moment. How do you guys feel about the teams today? I'm pretty hyped about them. I yeah. can only imagine it will be a battle of giants that we never seen bef seen before, and that they will perform very well. All right. Can you please uh, enlarge your, because yes. the stream is, okay, and I'm ready as well. So we have Walford, we have Harbor City and the Kura Castle, right? So let's see what game we have. Okay. So, nochmal als update. Das Wheel wird jetzt gedreht und dann wird entschieden, welche Karte gespielt wird und es geht los. This is Harbor City. Mm, Harbor City. Wow. Interesting. Okay, okay, guys. Thank you. Another field map. Battle map. Yep. <laughs> okay. I just realized that, uh, yeah, I maybe should drink a coffee before the. <laughs> before the, the thing, because unfortunately, I don't think you were able to see. Uh, because I have not properly changed the scene. Yeah, seems like I didn't, so... Uh, what? <laughs> happens. Uh, happens, yeah, yeah. Sorry for that, guys. I, I was a little bit ill uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, still getting up to the speed, so... Well, life is life. But uh, you can rewatch it on Ari Tournament, Ari Toshima stream. Uh, I make sure to, to make a clip of it later on and also post it to make sure that you We'll all see that indeed the Harbor City was chosen, but yeah, the Harbor City is the map. Yeah. That's an interesting map. We've seen uh, quite a few sally outs on it um, from other teams. So um, that's that's one thing I'm going to look out for uh, if, once we see uh, the units that are chosen for both teams. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so hmm, what can what else can we expect from the Harbor City? Let's think about it for a moment, as we still have a few, few minutes before the game starts. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so we've seen that um, the walls are quite travelable, especially on the A point. Um, the supply after it is really harder to get. There are two supplies, uh, one a bit farther in the city. Um, and at the same time, the defenders can also really keep the end point for a long time. But like we said, it's, it, it's a pretty big map. So once you're in the city, Mm -hmm. It can almost feel a bit like a field battle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think Kev might be a big decider today if I'm gambling right now. Um, what do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, there is a lot of tight spaces as well. We need to remember that. And as I said earlier, games are totally different uh, from what was uh, what was uh, visible, what is visible on the on your usual, you know. Uh, servers, so um, this is definitely thing to to watch out. 
Uh, the lobby is open, by the way, CB, so the teams are starting to flow in. And we will be starting in, yeah, in six minutes. So uh, let's discuss the map later on a little bit. For now, let's jump to the teams and what we know about them. So, guys, a short introduction of the teams. We are having EU1 versus EU2 battle once again. Same like last week, EU1 versus EU2. EU1 represented by the Kittens, Team Kittens, and EU2 by Lamalan. Let me tell you a little bit with a little bit about Lamalan. So they are Turkish and Spanish lineup. They have 10 Turkish players, five, five people from Spain. They are representing Legendarian and Guardia Templaria houses. And basically, they play quite a long. They play since first season, and uh, definitely they are joining the tournament to have some fun with friends and you know compete. But they are because they are llamas. They are actually aiming to achieve the first place. So definitely, we shall see how it will end up for them. On the kittens, on the other end, they are EU one team, as said earlier. They are from Russia and Ukraine. They are from Rose, Legion and Forbidden Empire houses. And they try to participate in all the major two tournaments. So they have uh, quite a lot of experience, I guess. So uh, especially that they are playing even from open beta. So similar from the time perspective, maybe even a little bit longer. They are aiming for first place because they can and they will do that. So they're very confident about their uh, their tactics and their playstyle. About the playstyle, Kittens, they are basically 15 different party leaders and right leaders in one team trying to play the game and not get into fight among themselves. So interesting answer to the question. On the Lama land, on the other end, they are representing a lot of individual talents and they basically, as they are Lamas, they spit on everyone, right? So we will see if this will uh, give them some range damage buff. Uh, when it comes to some history, uh, Lama Land biggest achievement, they have defended CC in season 3 and 4. Uh, for the Kittens team, last season they have taken Reginopolis from the guys who won the season. So definitely a lot of uh, a lot of um, achievements on both ends. And CB, what else can you tell us about the teams? Um, yeah, quite a bit. Um, I've played quite a few players. Uh, I think you as well from uh, the Lamaland team. Uh, one of them is Brave Hakan. He is very impressive with his unit kills. Um, he averages four, 143 units uh, in his games, and that's that's a lot. If you play sieges, you know that's a lot, um, especially on average. Um, on the kitten side, we got Ramses with an average troop skill of 114, and you can see a gap there. It's pretty big. Um, but I expect their players to be really good and to be able to make up for that. Um, on the hero kills, we got for Lemmerland the Luce, who is the highest KDA with 5.4. And on Kitten side, we got Komata. I hope he's playing today as well. I'll check in a bit. Uh, he got 8.3 kills on average per game, which is also quite a bit. Um, other players to look out for are for Lemmerland Luan Luan Kur. I hope we are saying that name right. Um, but I'm not, and he's also in the game today, so he's one player to look out for. Um, they have players with levels above 4,000. Can you imagine having levels above 4,000? You need to play from season one if you want to get there, especially right now, or play for quite a few more seasons. Um, so yeah, they've got really good players, like you said before, they've been playing for a long time, and their individual skill is really high. Um, both teams are looking forward to using Berserkers as well. Uh, might be another interesting unit, like you said, with some small corridors on this map um, that people, that teams might take use of. And about the, the weapons, we know their team uh, captains like to use the short sword. Um, and he's got actually a pretty good tip for you. Um, if you have the Thunderstruck ability, right, the big knockdown ability for, for the short sword, just make sure you use it for the team and try not to use it too much in the 1v1s. And I can agree with that. Like dropping down the walls or pikes, it's such a big advantage once you really start pushing. And um, yeah, great tip. And for the poleaxe, just try to hit your ultimate. Um, yeah, it makes sense, right? It's the lockdown. Um, so for Lama Lands, let's see if they bring out the poleaxe. We haven't seen it too much play being played last week. So um, look forward to seeing another weapon in for both teams. 
yeah, so definitely very skilled matchup, a lot of high high levels, right? Almost 5,000 from, from Kittens versus uh, almost a little bit over 3,000 from Lama Lunch, right? So, um, you know, there is a difference of experience, right? When you talk about the in-game levels, it's not about the level itself, because level 60 is, is maxed out statistics. You don't get anything um, as per player. Um, other than you know better units and better experience of course on tournament server all the um, um, units are uh, equal right you have them maxed out so there is no unit difference there is no equipment difference equipment even is exactly the same for all the people there is no crafting allowed uh, so um so uh, everything is is, uh, is same even the horses right each player have only three horses to use so if someone is playing spear they need to watch out a little bit because this is um, this is something they can uh, spear players rel rely on, right? So we shall see how it goes. Um, the, for now, the teams are filling up slowly. We are still waiting for last two or three players, so we will be starting very very short. And uh, yeah, can't wait. Absolutely, it's gonna be an exciting game. Um, Harbor City. I've seen so many fun games and tournaments on this one. Um, I cannot wait, absolutely. Um, one thing that we saw in tournaments is uh, people open the gate right, they try to sell you out, and some teams just use the trap right away. Um, so this might be something to watch for. Um, you definitely need to, to look out as the attacker that you're not getting st stomped at the first uh, few minutes and lose too many units. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to, to see how teams adapt to, to strategies that might be possible, right? You, you, you can also choose not to sally out. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see if teams adapt to each other, and especially since they play back and forth. Um, so curious what's going on there. Yeah, and uh, actually the 8 point might not be defended too much, right? Mm -hmm. Especially that you need to consider uh, trebuchets. Uh, attacking team have trebuchets available. Defenders don't have any additional artillery except from what they have already, uh, what is already you know spawning in, right? Already placed on the map. So from that perspective, uh, you know this is very highly skilled teams. So you can expect that the defenders will lose their uh, cannons quite quickly. I would give them more than two minutes of a lifetime, to be honest. With that amount of time and firepower, maybe they will be able to destroy one, maybe two groups, right? We need to watch out for some special actions, like we have observed in the first tournament, where one of the teams have used a lot of, um, I believe it was Rattan Rangers, so the um, automatic crossbow unit uh, with fire damage buff and also with glaive buff. Mm, to take, and they stacked three of them in one place and take down the, the tower. So maybe some specialized tactics like that will be used. But other than this, this kind of specialized tactics, there is not too much equipment in the hands of defenders to stop the towers to flow in. And then when towers are there, having so much open space and such a wide walls allow attackers to use the trebuchets very nicely. So I would. If, if I were to give uh, one advice for the defender team on this map, have always have one person who will have be, I don't know, using Namkans or whatever, staying at the back and watching for trebuchets. Whenever trebuchets start to move, you need to already call it out. If they do it too late, they can have, you know, a lot of damage to, uh, received from the, from, the, from the trebuchets. So something to watch out, definitely. Yeah, quite true. Um, I'm, I'm really curious where the defenders are going to draw their uh, defensive line. They have to do it somewhere. Um, uh, we have seen that quite often they do it uh, at the front gate, right? You can set up your uh, photobrusher at the sides, and it's pretty hard to get through there. It, it cannot be trapped. And then you can start defending the staircases and prevent the opponent from coming down. So that might be a place. Um, another one might be the supply itself, uh, where you can get your ranged uh, resupplied really quickly and also heal units if they are low. So yeah, there's there's quite a few places where, where the defending team has to make a stand at one point and make sure to slow down the attacker team. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what other places are you looking uh, looking for on the map? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so for, for, I'm looking for, for the map itself. So short update, we are still waiting on last uh, person. He's right now loading, so he will be here just shortly. Uh, therefore, I have closed the bet, so no more bets allowed. Uh, for the map itself and for your questions, TB, I think it's very interesting to see how the teams will tackle the last capture point. If you are playing this map on a rankets, there is tons of artillery placed on both sides, both on the attackers, on the defenders. So there is a lot of artillery and this is heavy artillery fire as well, because there is a lot of choke points on this map, uh, especially the later uh, stages of the uh, of the map. So from that perspective, I think no artillery at all, no Falconettis, uh, stuff like that. This is this is something that that's I'm very interesting. What they will come up with, cannot wait for that. On top of that, uh, often you see the game changing or game winning move of a Golden Cavalry um, flank, right? So let's say attacking team is pushing from the from the right side. They are on cap already. They are not covering the back too well, or there is just one person with pikes. So if you have, for example, short sword and you have um, uh, golden cavalry like hussars, you just come in, use your ultimate to move the pikes away, go through them, and then charge in the back of everyone. No golden uh, cavalry here means nothing like that can happen. So they will either have to commit much more people to the flanks with uh, with different kinds of horses, or they will have to find something else. And this something else is something that I am truly interested in. Mm -hmm. We absolutely we talked about it in the rules that without the golden units, uh, teams are having to reinvent some of their strategies with with units like you said with rot and marksmen to destroy towers. Uh, I was so amazed when I saw that, and uh, we might see teams using uh, different units to reach a similar goal. We've seen uh, Zekalian militia being very popular in the tournament scene. Uh, with their burn, they can really. Um, disable some of the shield walls or the defensive lines are set up uh, but same for, for for the defender they can use the Kalia militia and choke points to prevent the attacker from coming in stalling for time um, yeah so we might see more different units being played than what you might expect from territorial wars for example mm -hmm. definitely yeah I, I see some more questions about the start time uh, yeah, we are still waiting for last person to join the join the lobby, so he will be here very shortly and uh, will be starting in a in a very very short moment. So just waiting for one last person. <laughs> exactly. Also, I uh, see a question for you, uh, Sir Sir Doggy. <laughs> I think it's about your dog, right? You are the most famous streamer for Conquest Blade with a dog, I think. Um, but how has Dual Blade fared? Uh, I can't. I don't think we saw Dual Blade being played last uh, week, did we? Uh, yeah, we did We did not. Uh, maybe, no, even on the deathmatch I don't think there was any, right? So, uh, I believe one team used two light armors and both of them were bows. Uh, I think both of them were long bows and this was only one time. Other than that, uh, majority of heavy armors and medium armors, so... Um, purple, I mean, in the tournament itself, if... If someone is brave enough and skilled enough, sure, why not? I mean, everything is allowed to be used, every weapon. But then you have to remember that there is a rule of three lives only. So you have only three lives. You spawn once more and then you can spawn two times more. Dual Blade is very fragile, right? He can do a lot of damage. He can do a lot of hero kills, definitely. So he can hurt this uh, this limit for the enemy team. But then, if he misplaces himself or he misplays, right or whatever, then if he can die very fast and you know he loses his life. So this is also similarly uh, punishing punishing for for the for the owner of the dual blade. So uh, yeah. And looking into previous games, uh, considering how closely operation, like how how built in in forms of cooperation and communication the teams are, right? They are moving as like a like one blob most of the time, or in the two like main parties, very strongly together. Everyone covering, you know, all the sides. Someone is watching back. Someone is watching front. Flanks are also observed most of the time. With so. Um, such high skill and such high cooperation we observe 
it is very very hard for dual blades to find an opening to do anything right so that, that's i imagine is the, the main thing that we we will not see i'm not saying for sure but i wouldn't assume that anyone would be brave enough to pick the dual blade on the tournament yeah i can agree um i think the stealth ability from a dual blade it's it's quite unique um, it allows for really sneaky attacks in the back, but like you said, if your team is grouped up as much as we saw in uh, quite a few games, then it's so hard to, to get a pick. Um, you, you might catch a player while he's walking back to his supply, right? That might be something. Um, and that can also be very effective, We've, especially in the Territorial Wars. Uh, we see a lot of teams uh, just sending one player to a supply to either capture it or just prevent um, the enemy from getting new units because as long as you stay on a supply you cannot uh, get any new units in the game um, so that might be a, a tactic that some that's a, that a team uses to just send one player to the supply stop others from getting uh, new units but then again a short sword can do that just as well as long as he's, he's on the point and he's even more tankier so yeah depends on the player skill maybe as well but uh, we'll see yeah and we got confirmation that the last person have just finished downloading his patch and he's right now uh, there's the files checking for Persian, right? So it will take uh, probably like a minute or two more and then we can uh, jump onto the battle. So, I mean, the, the hype is growing in me. I cannot wait. I'm starting to like move more faster. Cannot wait for this game to happen. A lot of uh, very skilled, very highly high level players on both ends, EU1 versus EU2. Oh, so, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of. Uh, interesting things are in front of us absolutely even someone is deciding to call me on my phone give me a moment okay guys so maybe you can tell us right now what do you think uh, about the map how do you like the harbor map? Do you find it uh, interesting, Harbor City? Are you hyped for it? Come on, let us know your opinions on that. Because yeah, I I don't think I have I have watched uh, any tournament with this map yet. I mean, probably they were some, but I maybe I missed some of those. So yeah, there hasn't been too many for sure. Um, might not be a very popular map for some tournaments. I don't know. But I think we saw it. Let me check. Yeah. So a lot of things uh, which you know are uh, expected, right? Can come on things you cannot plan for. Especially that this map is also not available on territory wars, right? So uh, you cannot. It's only sieges. So it even bigger difference from what you are um, used to serving on this map right it's on the on rank ranked battles and on, si on sieges it's not on territory war so 15 versus 15 uh, matchups on territory war right people don't have too much experience from from the harbor city so it brings even bigger unknown yeah, absolutely I think I've seen one game at least with uh, End Gegner versus Eden, I think it was, or versus Goblins. It might even be Goblins from NA. Mm -hmm. I think it was. Um, and they played on Harbor City, I think End Gegner lost that one mm -hmm. on the attack, but I think they won on the defense. You know, to make sure that I got that correct. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was a really interesting map. Um, I think in game two it was that Goblins uh, worst out with Kev. They abandoned A point completely and it just made it a. Uh, a calf battle after that, and um, uh, Endgame lost basically all their units, and they just couldn't um, they couldn't come down the stairs anymore. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, goblins couldn't really come up the stairs as well to fight them because they uh, didn't have any infantry left there. Yeah. No. Okay, we have confirmation that uh, the, the 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 last player is on ninety five percent, so almost finished. Uh, so should be here shortly. Uh, Magner, Eden have not lost all. Unfortunately, they have uh, not been able to participate. Yesterday, they have uh, pulled out of the tournament as they didn't have enough people. That's their official statement. So, uh, hence the, the losses all, all lost for this team. 
Yeah, Van Blade. I mean, the cavalry on this map is, is very heavy, usually in the sieges or rankets, but remember, no, no golden era units means much less cavalry available. And the one that is available have much less impact, right? They cannot, like, uh, uh, you don't have pussers who can go through pretty much everything, right? And you don't have any, any other uh, cavalry who, who can uh, do some specific things. Yeah, interesting to watch. Uh, and yeah, you said end gig there. I believe they are in group D, right? Uh, sorry, group C playing next week. So, uh, yeah. I'm posting right now the on the chat. Uh, right now I'm posting on the chat uh, for the Twitch stream, guys, you can see the official tournament um, standings site. You can here follow what games are played when, who will be playing what and so on. Uh, so basically right now Kitten team will be attacking, Lamaland will be defending. And then later on they will switch sides, right? After that we'll have a field battle and then we'll have Deadman battle as well. So interesting. Things coming in. Okay, so seems like the last player is logging in, so we'll be starting in a few seconds time, hopefully. Uh, hopefully we have everything set up already. Uh, yeah, so in group C we have DTI team slash Russian village boys. We have Endgegner and Pondguard as well, that will be group C played next week. And in two weeks we have Goblins, we have Never Sim Takimi and we have Crippled Squad. So, uh, a lot of interesting things. The Magnet Island thing that, uh, yeah, an A team came out of the city and destroyed you outside. All right. Yeah, I mean, the small gate can be a, a crucial point to block if you're an attacker, right? Uh, make sure that they are not going away. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. Remember, right? No Golden Era Cavalry. Uh, no artillery, a lot of things have changed since your standard games, so definitely expect the unexpected. We really need to see how the teams will uh, will address the problems which we, with, di with different rules, right? Yeah, absolutely, it's been very different. Um, we can also tell you that um, the, the Lamaland team is going to be on the red side and uh, Kittens are going to be on blue side for first uh, for the first game, and I can see all the players from Lamaland that uh, they wrote are their top players. Uh, Sexy Kebab, we got Lou and Luan Kur, Ray Farkan. They are three of the players that are really good on the team that we know of at least. And for the kittens, um, I think I've seen Burgood, and I'm not tolerant in if I'm remembering correctly in Friday Night Fight. So they are players that have been in tournaments for us, for sure. So, um, yeah, both teams seem to be almost ready. Yeah. Okay, seems that um, the person uh, we are waiting for have still... Um... Uh, still uh, had some character issues, he need to recreate his character for some reason. Uh, so he will be... here? Okay. I thought it would take him longer, but seems that he had already everything prepared, fast click through all the skills and whatnot, and... Uh, we are ready. So, guys, we are starting. Let's prepare for the battle. Let's go. Hype up in the chat. Come on. Spam some emotes. Haven't seen any emotes spam yet. Let's do this. Yeah. And we are loading. EU2, let's go. <laughs> EU1, EU2, <laughs> indeed. And if you're NA, you can just enjoy the the destruction from for EU. Yes, you can indeed. And we are right into the game as you can see harbor city the map we talked about a little bit 
a lot of things are going to happen. For now, what we can observe in the Team Kitten on the left side, on attackers, there are two short bows, so probably they will be working together, picking off the targets. But other than that, pretty much everyone else is short sword or maul, so a lot of heavy armors. On the Lama Lands, so the defending side, we can see full heavy armor and two muskets, two medium armor. So a lot of damage dealers in the musket side. We have Glaive and Polax as well to help secure the kills and uh, much more moles. So I guess it makes sense to drop opponents from the wall. How about the units, TB? Yeah, units are interesting. Um, I don't expect a Sally out unless they suddenly change all their units. Five army guys right now and five berserkers. Um, so a lot more berserkers than what we've seen before. Although some units are getting swept around right now. We see some Zikali and Militia, just two of them, and a lot of Namkens for the kitten teams. And the attackers got a, quite a few gunners in there as well. Uh, Genesarius and Imperial Arbuchets, I think it is, or Griesrat. But mostly uh, the stalwarts and the pikes and Fort Rocha that we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. What we talked about uh, the game prep about the towers, that it might be hard for the defenders to stop them. Seems like Team Kitten even wants to reinforce the push of the towers and they are bringing four times the martellatory unit, right? The hammer boys, which give the defense buff for the siege equipment when it's pushed. So with, with, uh, with this additional help, um, I would bet that even not a single tower will be destroyed. We'll see how good they are in the artillery department. So... That might be the game changer. Yeah, exactly. And I'm wondering if, if the units are correctly on the screen, then we can see that the uh, kittens on the defensive are using quite a few fast units, like Berserkers, Azabs, and also Jeflins. So they might uh, use a hit and run strategy. But let's see what we can see on the map. Yes. So what we can see right now is they have placed in two sides and they are starting to prepare the defenses. Seems like the Team Kitten is stopping in a uh, moment because yeah, they have one guy who disconnected. Um, so uh, they are waiting, I think, for him to connect. It might be the remake, we'll see in a moment. But for now, the Lama Land... Uh, I believe we are not able to see the Chapas casters, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, it seems like the one person crashing from Team Kitten will make them uh, do the remake. Which is interesting, because I believe they should play, because he can reconnect. So basically he will just lost, lose a minute or so, but he will be able to rejoin. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, everyone is leaving the battle, so this will be a remake. Very sportsmanship like, unfortunate, but very sportsmanship for both teams. Yeah, definitely, and uh, big bravo for the teams as well to agree on that on the chat. Because, you know, people are people, right? Someone might have a you know, dead disappointment on Sunday evening plant and want to <laughs> finish it as fast as possible. Exactly. So, uh, so might not be, you know, interested in playing like that, but uh, sportsmanship is here and very happy to see that, so... We need to go to rejoin the lobby. I have switched the screens for a moment and I will drive to rejoin the lobby shortly. I mean, at the end, it's not like uh, some other games where you have very limited amount of uh, people and uh, very limited amount of uh, options right here there are so many people so many units so many different tactics and strategies that even if you would try to cheat and capture from the remake right what units they had or whatever there is not too much you can adjust right so yeah plus we are running on the delay so i don't think uh, yeah this will this will cause any problems but uh, that's yeah, the first remake we have mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Mm 
so we are waiting. Uh, they are joining the lobby once more. All of the players, a uh, few more players waiting. So there will be one or two more minutes of a delay. But uh, yeah. Magner saying that you can't join the game. I am pretty sure you can. You know, in our tournament, what we had so someone who crashed and he reconnected. That's something I'm uh, pretty sure of. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ordering something interesting. Uh, oh, Hydra says in the chat, the Jets are good for defending supply after A. Um, I think so as well. Uh, we already saw that uh, Kittens had a couple of uh, Jeffs, not too many, but just a few. And we've seen other teams using Jeffs quite a bit also. Um, you can really snipe heroes with them. And um, of course, with the three lives only, if you if you get Jeff too many times, then uh, you might also not come back at all. Mm -hmm. So Jeff can be very effective, effective, I think, with this uh, rule set that we play on. Yep. Uh, okay, so players are reconnecting, waiting for the last one, and we'll be starting shortly, so... Uh, can't wait even more. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking... Yeah, at this point, I'm thinking that they are doing this on the... Uh, at this point i'm thinking they're doing this on purpose to hype up everything even more so yeah they're just teasing us yeah okay so uh, the team have confirmed that uh, he tried to reconnect but uh, there was some problem he could not he was stuck and could not join so that's why the remake was decided so let's hope that no more issues will happen this time still waiting for the last person to join we have everyone in and we will be starting in a moment uh, hopefully no more problems. We are moving into the game screen. And let's go. So once more, come on, hype up in the chat. Spam the emotes. Come on, I want to see all the emotes that all the emotes that Twitch has to offer. So, uh, talking once more about the players and their equipment, seems like this is exactly the same what they have used, right? Uh, no changes. Two short sword, one uh, musket on the team kitten attacking side, and two medium armors, so two muskets, um, and everyone else on heavy armor. On the Lama Land side, we have Polax and Glaive, probably for some damage buffs and for securing the, the kills, and then a lot more mauls will be able to throw enemies away from the walls. So Stevie, would you like to talk about the units? Yeah, for um, the attackers, for kittens, I'm oh, sorry, for um, Lamaland, I'm seeing, oh, sorry, yeah, kittens, for the attackers, I'm seeing the same units. And for Lamaland, I think they made some changes. They might actually few less armigers for now, wonder if they change it up. And they also have fewer berserkers in their lineup currently. So it looks like they made some changes. They have more Jeffs now, currently three Jeffs in there. And one, two, three Berserkers only, and just just the one army, or no, two, two army girls right now. And we see no cap at all for, um, for the Kittens team, which is interesting. Yeah, and I would like to point out also, like, if you observe the units closely, pretty much everyone had two times Pike units. So it seems like if you would odd add up all the pikes the team kittens bring to the attack you could you know move to the moon or, or whatever right the, the length of the pikes combined is, is amazing so we'll see if this will be something that will bring them the victory here because uh, i would say this is non-standard play the pikes units have their advantages but they have also a lot of dis disadvantages maybe they expected heavy cavalry usage from lama land on the defender's side but uh, yeah this might be something that we'll have to look and right now fortunately everyone have been coming to the game properly, no one disconnected, so we can focus on the game. Opening Trebuch, already cleaning up some artillery, very interesting use of that. I mean, later on in the later stages of the game, the trebuchets are not that useful because there is a lot of uh, tight uh, cover, uh, cover um, houses. So right now using it, it might be not that bad idea. We see a lot of artillery fire across the board from left to right. 
seems like for now the uh, defenders are doing quite good. Not that many artillery left. Uh, lost, sorry. Yeah, there's still a lot at the main gate. We're seeing some units getting killed, and the battering ram is already gone. Oh no, it's still it's not even pushed. Okay. So some unit losses, not too many, still all heroes alive. And they seem to have a hard time hitting the cannons on the right side. They are pretty hard to get, normally even. Yep, and the small gate is not contested at all. As you can see, no one from attackers or defenders is even there. So right now seems like the team kitten is pushing focus on the right side of the map. They are trying to push both of these towers forward. They are destroying the artillery as much as they can with everything. And they were successful in doing so. Both cannons over here are gone. Also, this cannon is gone. The middle cannon is gone on the one left over here. Ah, well, it's gone as well. So no more cannons who can attack those two towers. Yeah, the two cannons on the left side of the map uh, were not used at all up till now. So interestingly, um, they didn't. They chose not to use those. Apparently, they think the right side is way more important. But no more cannons there. Uh, still, all heroes alive still as well. And I think that one siege tower on the left might go down, but the others will reach as there is no. Well, they are shooting with ranged on the right for uh, tower. So we cannot see how low it is. I think, but. It's burning a lot, so maybe it's enough to take that one down. Yeah, and they are trying to counter it with the cannon fire, as you can see, but on that range, cannons are not that accurate, unfortunately. So this turret, uh, this tower might not reach. We'll see very shortly. I don't, I cannot. I ah, yeah, HP is here. Look at that. It's like 5% or even less. They're trying their best, but it will arrive with like one or two. Uh, that's unfortunate. So Team Kitten, they achieved what they wanted to do. Only one trebuchet left, destroyed all the cannons, two towers they planned to push are here, the other tower is destroyed, uh, I mean they didn't cover it too much, so that's why it was destroyed, but yeah, they will be right now preparing for the push. Look at the um, placement of the um, Team Kitten, they are very heavily moving towards one side. They are not opening anything else, they are not pushing anything else, they will have only two entry points, plus of course the ladders if you need. So it seems like they will rely on their brute force to push one side, they don't want to play any backstab, they don't want to play any, you know, um, take a plast from behind, go through the small gate with one person. Full force is right here, as you can see, yeah. everyone. General, just before uh, we see uh, Kittens moving up, uh, Kittens is not bringing any ranged units and Lama Land has, so this might be uh, an advantage for Lama Land for now, at least, as we see uh, quite a few units dropping. Um, oh, sorry, advantage for Kittens, as we see quite a few units dropping from Lama Land. Mm -hmm. And Zikalia Militia goes in already, burning down those uh, shield walls. Yeah, so Zikalia Militia can be crucial if you have 15 people stacked in one time. The damage will multiply heavily, so by the time they reach the main cap, they can be very, very damaged. Look at the amount of fire that is here. That's amazing damage that they are dealing. So if they will be able to withstand and rotate fast enough from the Lama Land, this push can, you know, just burn down pretty much. Advances moving in, trying to clear out these stairs. So the Kalyan Militia very nicely pushed over and the Trebuchet covering the other flanks. So very nicely played from the Team Kitten. Even though a lot of their units have died. As you can see, there is a lot of bodies around, burned out, much of those. But then, still a lot of bodies are in front. We can see Azabs coming in to stop the advance. We can see some pikes charging in, these are halibards. So they are trying to stop them as much as they can. Another trebuchet coming in, we'll see if this will hit anything. Kittens has already lost three people on the attack. Uh, they are coming back right now with new units, but uh, Lama Land at the same time has lost more units on that staircase and they are coming in with new units right now. They are still bringing a lot of Sicali and Militia. And yes. Kittens are pushing to the left side slowly. We can see Lone Lone Sword dropped down. I think it was by grenade from Cometa. Not sure on that one, but definitely he will be out of the fight for quite a long time, maybe even killed. And uh, thanks to Lamaland having supply points just over here, very close, they are bringing more and more units. As you can see, right now Team Kitten is pretty much out of units. New pikes have arrived, but this is just one pike unit left. Only heroes coming in to the main point. But this might be a very good tactic. Look at that. They utilized this 
units very well to the last second and they are closing back right now with trebuchets and advances not allowing Lamaland to come close to the point and they are just capturing the point so very heavily heavily brawling around using all the units to capture the attention of Lamaland and just moving back here with this point to the A side Look at this, it's so interesting. Kitten says no units left, just heroes, but they seem to be able to body block just enough with that one shield unit of Star Wars that they have and using the trebuchets on the right staircase, slowing down Lama Land to get on the A point as they, they get it. Um, we can see that both teams lost a lot of units. Um, Kittens lost almost 300-400 units as Lama Land lost about 300. So both teams seem to have taken an equal beating um, as they look to go for the, one of their next supplies and Kittens has to regroup and get new units. Um, as we just saw, the heroes on the point had no units at all, so they will take a minute or so uh, for them to get back to the supplies and bring up their, their new units. Yeah, so actually Kitten, Team Kitten lost almost twice, right? 500 coming in, oh, yeah, unit casualties. So. Yeah, so this might be this might be crucial for their further pushes. They also lost or used five trebuchets, and we will see what they will do right now because this point is the usual stalemate kind of situation. You have a lot of distance to cover if you are attacker, right? This plus to this point is like ten times the distance that the defenders can do here. Similar here from this plus to move further close to the push. It's also a long distance, so. They have nine minutes left. We'll see how they will utilize it. But if defenders play it well, they can really deal a lot of damage to the to the attackers. Attackers cannot resupply fast enough, and they might have some problems. So we'll see what they will do. Seems like they wanted to go for the small gate and try to do something because they use the left plus. But right now, look at that. Everyone is running back to the same slot they wanted to go. What is interesting is that the gate is open, so maybe they will use this as a distraction or maybe they will go here as a separate thing. What is interesting as well from my perspective would be Lamaland having absolutely no one... Ah, sorry. Yeah, there is Brave Hakan hiding over here. He was watching whole time from the top and looking at the Team Kitten, what they are planning to do, making the rotations, making all the cons. So no problem there. Lamaland knew everything, what they wanted to know. And Hakan can just jump down here if under pressure. Seems like he will be under pressure right now. Uh, but Hammer, he will be able to bring him. And let's see where he takes him. He will just drop him down to the safety. So Brave Hakan, no lost life. Very much information gained. So definitely on the plus side. Seems like Team Kitten are right now struggling to choose the side they will be pushing on. They want from one side to other side. Uh, from the plus and then once more they went to the other stairs they are not sure what to do they are once more bringing a lot of pikes a lot of heavy push units only one damage unit i see yeah only one krieg threat. so definitely heavy brawling force moving into these stairs and seems like once again no planks no nothing just pure force cooperation and strain what can be crucial for them here is that pikes when they brace they brace upwards so when going down the stairs they are much less effective on the other end on the contrary llama land this can work towards them um, on the plus for the for the positive side on them and the push is coming in yeah we can see the range still dealing damage it's been so effective in the last battle especially sicali and militia as the first pike advances are going down she's trying to follow up yeah and we have arming that's also here from the flank if needed, can another pike unit coming in from the defenders. They are very nicely holding him the one spot. The defenders have chosen the spot because they were higher on the stairs. They moved back. They were the ones that chose the battlefield. And the battlefield seems to be playing to their advantage. With a lot of Zekalian militia, a lot of javelins and a lot of archers around covering and shooting from every direction. You can see we have shooting Namkas from the left. We have shooting Arkebuzers from the right. We have Imperial archers from the right. They are just cleaning out everyone. With the great balance of frontline units, so shields and pikes, and the backlight damage dealers, they were able to clean the attack pretty much empty without too much loss. So we will look at the stats in a moment. 
Yeah, some because of some Lama Land. They all got almost the same unit kills again. They are at 900 units killed right now, and uh, Kittens has... Oh, sorry, 900 units killed from uh, from Kittens, and Lama Land only lost 400. So they are really expanding their leads as they uh, even chased up onto the walls to kill some of the heroes. And if we look at the units or the heroes that died, let's see, where are they? How many people had died already twice? Yeah, we have Ramses on the, on the Kitten side, and on the Lamaland we have Marv. Yeah. And Badir. So if there's another unsuccessful attack, and meanwhile, look at this. So, so Samuel is uh, actually capping the, 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 the final, but uh, for sure that they will be on there to defend it in time. Because this this maybe give uh, Kittens uh, a few more minutes to regroup regroup on the walls. Yeah, so we have missed that pretty much what happened. Samuel was the one player who jumped off from the stairs, he went behind, and then he moved to the cup. But quickly back to the game, look at the left side of the map. Kittens is moving in through the small gate, and it looks like they're trying to outrotate uh, Lamaland on this one. They have to use different strategies, but I wonder if uh, Lamaland's bringing out their cap right now, as this might be very effective. So definitely, the Kalian Militia will not be effective right now, because there is much units who are spread across a bigger amount of the ground, and they are pushing to the plot, seems that they are, the, yeah, they are late on the rotation. Similarly to what we, I was late with the camera movement, uh, Lama Land was a little bit late with the rotation, so Kitten, they are on the point, but seems that the fight will not be finished yet. They are still fighting for the plus. There are 10 more trebuchets left. I'm very interested why Lama Land, uh, why Team Kitten is using so uh, late with the trebuchets, right? 10 more left. You can see one is dropped here, very nice placement. We'll clear a lot of the units here. Maybe they will be able to cap it thanks to these trebuchets. Uh, we can see Short Sword still blocking in. The cap points, so it will not be easy task, and they are constantly under heavy fire from the archer. So the archer difference is making a, a good thing. Here we can see cut off guard the archebuzers without cover, nicely cleaned, nicely reacted from Team Kitten, but still CPCG, heavy armor blocking the cap point, and yeah, Team Kitten they are trying their best to cap it, but it's very hard to do so. Yeah, it's taking them so long, uh, Team Lamaland just continues to interrupt the supply and that way Team Kitten cannot get new units which they desperately need, but they are losing more and more units and you can see that they only have 439 left, 430, as Lamaland is moving in from the right side as well and if they get this kill or this team fight, I think Kittens does not have enough units to come back from this. Yeah, I would say that Supply point is not even crucial for the taking new units, units, units because they are not that much, mostly for healing, right? So, yeah, another trap is dropping in, but over here we can see that nice two players have moved to the cap point. They will try to cap, and they have uh, walls of Fenrir, uh, sons of Fenrir coverage. Unfortunately, this unit doesn't deal that much damage to the champions, but they killed one. If they will be able to kill Bedir very fast, uh, they could get some capture points more, but yeah, Lamaland had everything under control, they just rotated 3 minutes left. 4 times, sorry, 3 times more units on Lama Land, and so definitely very hard thing to do at Team Kitten if they want to do anything here. 2 minutes 50 seconds left still. Berserker trying his best, calling the trebuchet on everyone else. He's dead, but the trebuchet yeah, flies so long, will not be able to do anything. Yeah, they're trying so hard and Team Kitten finally managed to get the right uh, supply. Um, but they do not really have enough units to perhaps begin another push, right? 250 versus 690. Um, this is going to be so hard. Um, we also see Ramses, he's died three times, he's out of the battle for good. So it's 14 to 15 players right now as we see Lama Land regrouping again on the left supply. And they are even pushing the right supply with their, their army ears. Look at this. Yeah, this is... It's a very good usage of the army, guess, right? The pinpoint on given, you know, not too many units here, not too many things to worry about. You can use their agility to the max, you can rotate from here to there, health where needed, and so on. So, 1 minute 50 seconds. Last push coming in from Team Kitten, as you said, 14 people left alive. Actually, one more person died, so only 13 people are available. They are trying their best, but I don't think they will be even able to get out of the stairs. 
not enough units left. That's pretty much the whole story. 160 units left, a lot of them dying here. We can see Pike militia pu pushing, and pretty much that's that's it. Just uh, just the heroes. So unless they would uh, be able to switch the the two light armor heroes to the dual blades and try to get behind and maybe do some some backup, I don't see another chance for the team kitten to be victorious on this attack. We can see more kills are flowing in right now. Three people are on three deaths from Team Kitten. They will not be able to spawn anymore. Four people. So 50 seconds, only 10 or 11 players left. Not too much that can be done. And as said, the rotation for the backline is happening. They are bringing two people here, Berserker and Foyer. Unfortunately, Lama went out of that and they have some units and some heroes on the on the point, we can see a very good duel of Lun Lunser with Fire fighting. We have Hammer from Goat coming to help, and I'm thinking that Fire will be dead right now. Lun Lunser taking the kill, very nicely done, and they have the cup under the control, the whole map under the control. Last trebuchets flying in to take some more lives of units, but this is generally going to be end. As we can see, only three players left from Team Kitten. They are running around and staying playing to survive yeah great win that was uh, that looks very convincing from lamaland uh, they got surprised one time in the rotation but other than that very convincing defense from them smart use of their units looked like uh, kittens was um, they were maybe too straightforward with their shields and pikes uh, it worked for them really well in the games that i saw from them before um, but in this one it was just too straightforward right yeah, definitely, definitely. And we can take a moment right now to take a look on the uh, statistics. So, on the Team Kitten side, we can see Berserker mode MVP with two hero kills, three deaths, three assists, 76 units killed and 147 capture points. So definitely he was leading all the charges and this is very clearly seen on the statistics. Other than that, he highlights would be the 75 killed and 70 on Avenger and Foyer. And we can see pretty much all of the team was quite uh, similar on average with the units killed. As said in the beginning during the pushes, pushes they bring a lot of um, uh, units which can survive long, you know, the brawler, the, the surviving units, but they didn't have enough units uh, damage dealers pretty much and this is very clearly seen on the stats where you compare it to Lamaland where we have Lon Lon Sor 6 kills, 13 assists and 140 units kill. Sexy Kebab 2010 and 120 and then Brave Hakan 171 units kill. This is I think one of the biggest we have seen this tournament so far. Han De Me as well 166 big big numbers i'm sure that this 170 160 plate i'm sure that they were either cavalry players or they were having some arquebusers or some zikalian some damage dealers this is how you win the games by balancing out the damage the survivability the movement speed everything around and seems like over here lamaland was able to do it better yeah they showed great patience which will we will see in the clips that we're going to show in a few minutes to you in attacking, they really used uh, the range to such a great effect. And if we go to the post battle analysis, we can maybe see uh, how many uh, different fights that we, we got from them. Um, Team Lamaland was just really effectively at using the supply. We saw them also, even at the left supply, when Kittens finally got into the city, they just stepped on it and off again and made sure that uh, Kittens just couldn't get a foothold in the city. Uh, and uh, like you said, during the Battle of General as well, they really utilize the stair stairs very effectively, um, showing that they know how this game works uh, with the pikes and, uh, and all those units. Um, mm -hmm. Also, very surprisingly that no units on Kittens has got uh, a player with uh, unit kills above 100, um, as uh, that we see that quite often in most games, but the unit difference was so big, it was 600 to 100 at the end in favor of Lamaland. Yep, so very well done. Okay, we are ready with the clips. Yeah, let's go. Let's get the first one. Hmm? Oh, wait, 
to, uh, to switch my stream and yes uh one moment please because something seems to be bugged a little bit uh, okay and like so okay so yeah let's go this is the first attack on the wall we can see the traps they weren't that effective because so much of kittens uh, was still at the staircase and we can see uh, Team Kittens finally managed to push through to the left and they still kept for the right shows uh, pointing at the staircase. This in the end allowed them enough time to get their heroes on the, on the, on the A point. But you can see how much time it takes and the range just continues to push in. Look at that, another Sicilian militia throw. Um, I think the burn damage was really big and then other units and heroes can finish off. And you can see units keep, keep coming in from the supply Whereas the units from Team Kitten have to take such a long time to get back, as we see a hero there downstairs that died before. It's just taking too, too long for Team Kittens to resupply. Well, Lemeland continues to fire into all the units. And look at this, there's just one Star Wars unit left with, what is it, eight, ten heroes from Team Kittens. But they do manage to get on the point as more traps fly in. Uh, maybe if Team Lemeland was even a bit quicker, they might have taken the eight point even back, right? Very impressive from them in the defense, but Team Kittens did manage to get the eight point there. Okay, moving to second. Yeah, this was really interesting for me. At first I was thinking, okay, with all the units that uh, Team Kittens has, they, they have to be able to push down, but they didn't really get up the staircase. Look how much range is flying in and the uh, Sikali militia is being so effective. The Namkans, look at it, one, two units, three units of Namkans and so much continued damage is coming into this battle and after a while you can see the shields are down there's just the pikes and like you said maybe two pikes is too many um, and you need to bring some range on those stairs to counter uh, the range from uh, from from level land um, right you can see it and yeah after a while it's just too much as a great victory on the defense for level land again mm -hmm. moving to the last clip yeah, this was after the rotation. Unfortunately, we missed to clip that one. But here we can see Team Kitten finally managing to get on the supply. But look at that. They just cannot capture it. It continues to keep getting inter intervened. And Lamaland fin finally managed to find the time to walk around and get from behind. And they just clear up everything that's there from Kittens. And if you look at the unit score, it's already dropping to 300 close to there. And this is not going to be enough. The traps continue to come in there and the traps on that supply are so effective or they can be very effective but in the end it wasn't enough and at the end of the clip we see another player standing on the the final as a distraction but was too little too late indeed so interesting game definitely i mean looking at how the how the game concluded at the end it was very 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 different approaches right Lamaland having all the all the balance of the units different uh, you know ideas for different points was very very interesting to watch on the contrary team kitten in my opinion they executed what they planned very well the problem i had with that is that it was the same thing pretty much all the time right they Pushed, they, they made um, heavy brawling idea the main thing they wanted to do, right? So they had a lot of shield units, a lot of pikes, and uh, that's pretty much it. I think I only seen one Archibuzer's unit or something like that, and this might be, you know, what uh, the damage difference, right? The damage output difference might be the key thing that pretty much was the, the, the crucial, crucial difference. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I mean, with such a big blob of units, you could see it, uh, it. You can only have so many units at the front line, and um, maybe if they split up on that, uh, for example, the, f uh, the second attack that we saw at the lower staircase, maybe if they split up, send five guys from the other side, maybe even a, a, a paladin unit or a unit, and or even condos, like just something that can charge from the stairs into the archers, clear some of that range, um, can be so effective. It, it can even be just one player, and that could be enough. Yeah, uh, so we have about uh, one more minute for the for the game to start. So uh, CB, if you could join the uh, if you could join the lobby, please. Yep, I'm in there already. 
Um, ah, yeah, I see. Okay, thank you. Um, so I see two more questions. So uh, Magner, they change sign now. Yes, indeed, they will be changing signs. So right now we'll see Lamaland on the attack. Uh, and then uh, Sven's uh, opinions on the weapon choices. Choices. I mean, this is something we see in, in pretty much all the tournaments, right? You have only three lives left. You want to survive as much as you can. You bring as many heavy armors as you can. Uh, with the playstyle of Lamaland, I would expect a little bit more uh, or a little bit less short swords, right? They could maybe bring more muskets, bring more damage dealers, balance it even not only on the units, but also on the heroes. From the idea of Team Kitten, of heavy brawling and heavy push on one dedicated side, it makes absolute sense that they didn't bring any spears to flank, they didn't bring any dual blades or whatnot. They bring all full, you know, full muscle team pretty much, right? So good, uh, good plan and, and, you know, good execution, right? At the end, it wasn't enough, but uh, the idea was, was there. Yeah, absolutely, and we've seen um, muskets being very effective. Um, they seem to have great the players that play muskets seem to have great control of the units as well. Um, I've seen uh, a lot of muskets getting the MVP. Um, they continue to dish out the damage, and especially on the on choke points, they can drop in so many headshots. The bombs are so effective. It's a great uh, hero class to play, I think, especially in this team team environment that we see in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, CB, if you could tell us a little bit more about the units, uh, uh, sorry, about the teams. Uh, I need to take a short 30 second break. We'll be back in a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll for sure I'll take over here. Yeah, so what we saw from Kittens was actually what we saw from them at the Friday Night Fight or tournament. If you haven't seen it, uh, make sure to, to watch it back if you like it. It's, it's some great content from a year over a year ago now. Um, but at that tournament, they showed great efficiency in uh, blocking their using their shields to different sides, attacking from different flanks. And what we saw just now from them was just snowballing it in one direction. Um, I didn't expect them to do that, uh, to do this, um, but so I hope that for the attack, they for the defense that we will see them in next, they will show that they can um, actually attack or defense defend from different sides and be uh, and show us what they got uh, there. Uh, we know they are a great team, so I hope that they uh, they show up in the next one. As Lalamaland, I wonder if they bring uh, another ranged heavy focus on the attack. It might be effective. Who knows? Um, they got the high ground for sure if they get the A point. And range can be very effective there if you're shooting down from the stairs. So let's look at that. And the the players that we looked out for before the game started, right? Sexy Kebab, Brave, Brave Hakan. They were also the ones uh, in, the, in the in the top charge just now for the team. Um, on uh, the kitten side, we saw all the te all the players scoring uh, relatively well, or just did what they had to do, I guess. Um, nothing too high because they got beat pretty hard in uh, in quite a few fights. So I wonder if there are some standout players on this uh, on this defense that we will see next from Kittens versus Lama Land in the attack. Yep. And uh, CB, you are uh, in the lobby? Because I cannot yes, uh, I am. see you. Okay. Uh, the... okay, so maybe it's it, it bugged for me, no idea. All right, but uh, yeah, uh, we are going into the game in a, in a few seconds. Oh, the first one picked up by the Lama Land. In the defense side, right now it will be switched, so we'll have Lamaland attacking and Team Kitten defending. So we will see if uh, they will change their strategy yeah, in some way. They can even the score, right? It's 1 0 for Lamaland deciding next game. Definitely. Let's switch to the game screen and let's talk about the game itself. Exactly. Loading in. So, on the Lamaland side, right now, blue will be... We can see a switch they have. Kandeme last time played the uh, Maul, I believe. Right now he's on short, uh, on the longbow with light armor. Other than that, we can see much, much, much more short swords. Only one Maul player, so this is definitely a big difference. I guess it makes sense. You cannot throw that easily when you are attacking, uh, throw enemy away with Maul. 
uh, interesting thing to see. And on the team kit, then we can see one light armor player, Pisash Pisash, playing dual blade. So I think this is first dual blade of the tournament. Interesting to see. Other than that, one medium armor with the musket and everyone else heavy armor. What about the units, CD? Yeah, units. Uh, I've almost thought that we were going to see a lot of calf on uh, on the Lamaland side, but they switched around quite a bit. So we're seeing still a lot of calf. One, two, three, four, five farming girls again, and quite a few berserkers there as well. Kind of similar to the first setup. On the defense side, we see a lot of javelins, and it uh, looks like Kitten has decided to bring some range this time. Uh, quite a few Zakali militia, maybe they are trying to use them based on what they just saw being used against them. But same for uh, Lamalands, we see that they also bring a lot of uh, a lot of Sikali militia, not for their first units, of course. We see uh, the Martatori coming in again as uh, Kittens start with a lot of uh, Jeflins, actually, in their first lineup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if uh, Lamaland will push on the same side that uh, Team Kitten pushed a moment ago, this might be a very good idea, right? You have a plus point very close in, you can resupply very fast and you can keep these javelins flowing and flowing and flowing forward so we will see where it goes for now let's maybe actually take a look at some of the player skins because we have not do, the, do that earlier so we have tank mobile mobile in the new skin with the c i don't i forget the name but yeah with the octopus at the top you can see some interesting schemes from the players all around k with the very classic skin, since start of the game it is, I like this skin very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks but nice. Yeah. And we Let's... can see that uh, uh, Lamaland are not wasting time, they're using a trebuchet to clear out the artillery already. Uh, on the right side of the gate, left side of the gate the same. Uh, and look at the left side, looks like uh, kittens are rushing out. I mean, they tried, so three people scouting ahead. Uh, they don't have any cavalry, so I don't think they are rushing. This is more uh, defensive scouting, but uh, and very aggressive one from Berserker, actually, so aggressive scouting. But yeah, they are just looking around, creating pressure, making sure that the Lamaland team will respect their presence here, right? If you have people roaming around, you need to watch at them, you need to be, you know, Take a look at them. You don't have as an easy job of doing whatever you want. Um, other than that, we can see artillery flying around, destroying all the cannons. As you said earlier, two trebuchets used to destroy some of the crucial ones. And a little bit different approach to the towers. Tower is not pushed at all. The middle one is being pushed. Uh, let me go closer. Ah, okay. Very nice shooting them from Team Kitten on the defense. They managed to destroy all the towers that were pushed. So nice, interesting stuff here, but Lamaland right now trying to get the gate up. They just pushed it very closely, but not finished it. So it seems like they want to have it ready for the last moment, or they just want to clear out the bombs from above the gate before they finalize the gate push. On the small gate, the stalemate is still here. Yeah, very surprising that they managed to take out two towers after we saw the traps being used on the artillery there, as uh, we did see one death uh, from a player of uh, Team Kittens who was too far away in the Lama Land uh, attacking zone. But nothing else really going on right now. Uh, surprisingly, something that you don't see too often is that the unit count for the attacking team is uh, even lower than the defending team. So you can see that they are not bringing too many uh, serfs or great units. They have pretty, uh, pretty low unit count currently. Mm -hmm. I think most of it comes from the uh, Grey Pikes, so they are quite numerous in parts yeah, of the Defenders. So. They, call the militia. they got three of them and they are only 12. Yep. So let's see how it will be put to the use, but for now, there is not too much to look at, to be honest, right? And the uh, first initial tower destruction was very crucial for the time, from the time perspective. Look how much time already passed and the attackers are exactly like they just heal like they spawned, right? The artillery is gone, yes, great. But other than that, they are not any any much more forward towards capturing the last point. So very good job from Team Kitten. Definitely much, much better idea, much better tactic than, than what they um, executed in the first game. Yeah, and I'm surprised they're defending the little gate so heavily. They got they continually have four or five people on the on the small gate. 
uh, as they do set up on the staircase as well, which is ex where we expect the biggest attack. But they certainly seem to to expect something uh, surprisingly, maybe. Mm -hmm. and we can see that uh, Kepa and Cabanas is controlling all the movement over here, so only two players. We have a lot of players nearby if they would be required. But Team Kitten very nicely riding out and riding in, right? They are right now going to hide and maybe they will go out once more and try to, you know, grab the attention. So Lamaland cannot be fully sure. You, you know, when you come to the tournament, you have some tactics, you have some maps drawn out, you have some plans, everyone is aware. If you throw some of the cogs into the whole machine, block some things, right? Maybe Kepa was supposed to do something important somewhere else, right? And they cannot do it. Or Cabanas right now, looking that the Berserker is coming behind them, he needs to watch out. Making sure that the chaos is there, uh, chaos and the enemy cannot do what they want, is also a crucial thing of the you know whole battle uh, and strategy, right? How yeah. it will be executed. And we can see Lamaland grouping up on the left tower, so this attack is going to be different than what we've seen before. Uh, they're also having a few players on the right tower. And they've brought uh, a lot of uh, uh, Lanzknechts, uh, field shields, uh, berserkers, and uh, for Torachio and Pikes, of course, well, but also some ranged. Yep. So the balanced approach is once more here from the Lamaland. The push is coming in. Very nicely done. Team Kitten, they are pushing out and they are capturing the plus, but it is too late. All of the units pretty much are already upstairs. And right now the fight is for the A point. With all the trebuchets flying in and very good split of the units across the two towers, seems like Lamaland are doing this very, very nicely. The losses that are here are very, very scarce. They are just blocking here with few shields, few azaps and so on. But other than that, it was free push for the A point. Team Kitten. The, the small push from the right side on the tower was just distracting uh, Team Kitten too much. And look outside, there's a few Kitten players with Kev outside, but they were caught with the, their tail between their legs. They were too late. Yeah, they captured both supply points outside, but the, the question is, will be will this be sufficient, right? I mean, you see, Ordinary spawned in and he's right away at the action with full unit left. So the cavalry players from Team Kitten missed this player. And this is very problematic because what Lamaland is doing right now, they have noticed. Three players are outside. They are not coming here anytime soon. Let's push it. They have not even finished capping A point. They are doing the full push forward. Utilizing the bet coordination from the team kitten and bet uh, pretty much rotation, right? They didn't rotate fast enough. They are still moving forward. They have the advantage of, of, uh, of speed, so they are utilizing it and gaining as much territory as they can. Yeah, but this is really interesting from Kittens, uh, because Lamaland doesn't have any supplies, so they need to either win or die together and come back. As the Kev is coming back from outside to the gates, and clearing quite a few of the units, uh, we can see that the unit count is almost exactly equal, which means that uh, Team Kitten has actually killed 100 more, or 50 units more. But uh, over to you to the fight here. Yeah. And Barry can very nicely counter charging in the back of the enemy uh, enemy cavalry. So nice, nice counter push from Lamaland with the cavalry. He spawned with it a moment ago and coming in here, trying to help his team. Well, how this is going on for Lamaland? I guess it was a little bit expected. They tried their luck with pushing this forward. It didn't work out. So they just lost like one or two units and they are moving back to regroup, constantly shooting with archers from above. Remember, archer units have bonus damage if they are shooting from above of the enemy. So this is nice utilization of the archers. Very many, a lot of damage was, was dealt here and they are going to just retreat. Recapture their point, they still have 9 minutes left, so not that much time lost. And they are just going to slowly think about their next steps and we can slowly as well think about the statistics. Yeah, it's quite so. We can see four traps being used. We can see that uh, quite a few players from Lumberland went down, uh, but nothing too much. That Brave Hakan actually got killed twice already, uh, once by the Deal Blades. So it looks like Kisha Pisha is quite a sufficient at the Deal Blades. Um, as for the unit kills, we got uh, pretty similar to what we've seen from the start. It's a 100 unit difference, so it's the same difference that we had at the beginning, as both teams have almost killed exactly the same. 347 for Lamaland, 343 for Kittens. 
Uh, the units that they're bringing on the field right now, uh, there's quite a few armingers for Lamaland, uh, Salsa, some Zikali and Militia. And Kittens are starting to bring out some Kef as well, as they continue to bring out a lot of Imperial Pikes and only one Shield Wall. As they're grouping at the gate, seems to be that they are defending at the gate, but also at the same time, Lamaland is starting to move up uh, as they see that the gate is heavily defended. Yeah, uh, sorry for that, I was switching some options. Seems like the attack is coming in. They have chosen a little bit different approach right now with splitting the, their forces for the small gate and for the left tower. So it seems like the same stairs will be utilized for the attack from Lamaland. They are right now being attacked from the back from TZ. And TZ being a little bit misplaced is going to die here very soon, and he did. And yeah, unit count very similar. Still 11 trebuchets left. Unfortunately for the attackers, there are not too many places you can use them close to the wall because the wall just will block all the damage. They are trying to think about what they can do now. They have four entry points, two gates and two stairs. Right now, seems like they are going to have the most push here on the one side, and they are going to maybe send someone on the flank. Kepa and Elderia moving there on the flank. Sex Kebab and Isaac watching from the top, shooting with archers, countering enemy archers. So very nice counter archery happening here with this unit over here, shooting at right now at the pikes. Very nicely done. And we can see that once more the Kalyan militia being the key thing to push forward. The stack from t Kitten was prepared. Unfortunately, they had to move out. They will just burn. So they had to move out very nicely done. Right now, the defense is quite scarce. They don't have any good position for the Team Kitten. And Lamaland, if they will attack once, uh, if they will attack strongly right now and watch for the flanks from the cavalry, I think they will be able to achieve something good there. They are slowly coming back. They are expecting a lot of attack from the Team Kitten. They are not sure where Team Kitten units are. Because, indeed, you cannot see them. They're hidden around, they have few units here, few units there. But the main force of Team Kitten is missing. They're not sure where it is and they are not pushing that aggressively because of that. Team Kitten on the other end is counter-pushing the flank. So the flank we were talking about from the other stairs earlier, right now is retreating, they have to. Marv very nicely blocking the, the this push and they are moving more aggressively towards the plus. They have gone down from the stairs fully. And the, the cavalry push from the back is coming in very nicely countered by the pikes. Most of the cavalry is down, but the other unit is here. And will it do good damage? No, it will be countered by another pike. So very well played. Ah, oh, but this one, yeah. This one they will not be able to do so. So a lot of cavalry. Nicely one by one by one by one. Pretty much four cavalry charges used and killed a lot of units from Lamaland but not all of them. There is still some that are here on the stairs and trying to push. So very interesting fight. Not something totally different than what we've seen in the first game. In first game, everything was happening in one place. One moment, pretty much 30 seconds gone. Here, the fight is like three minutes and in five places. A very interesting thing to watch. And it seems like right now, Lamaland don't have enough units. They will have to uh, regroup a little bit. On the other parts of the map, we see Kepa coming in with, uh, with uh, Cavalry, Berserker countering him with TZ, so it seems like all of this is under control. And good that I looked around, because here we have Aideria fighting with Ramses to be able to capture the point. He was able to do it just for a few percent, but right now the Ramses uh, with his Cavalry coming in definitely will have the upper hand here. On the other end of the map, we can see Lamaland starting to go down and putting much more pressure on the plus end. Nevash getting some units, pieces, pieces also with javelins rearming. Will they be able to capture it with just few units here to their utilization? Might be very hard, especially that the shields moved too fast and they pretty much died for free. In the behind we have Imperial Arcabuzzer, but they have no cover, so they need to retreat. They are getting flanked by the cavalry, so very poorly timed attack here from Lamaland. Yeah, Lamaland is uh, moving left to right, to right to left as uh, kittens are trying to continue to attack uh, on them with Gaff from different sides. We see the units dropping a little bit, but they stay so even for so long. 
Um, as we see that uh, Lama Land is trying to move to the left supply, as uh, Kittens is actually clearing up at the front gate. So the Lama Land uh, push on the left side is, uh, is moving on. Yeah, so they are going to push the plus. And remember, three minutes left, no more time will be added any at all. So still 11 trebuchets left. That's a lot of trebuchets left. You can see Sexy Kebab going to pressure the point here for a moment. You will receive a lot of damage from Rayani Saris. Yes, Horse is dead, but he will get some attention. That's a good thing. And then Lamaland going to push the plus side. Think it and defending here still with short sword. They will not be able to die uh, so fast. So definitely some time will be both here. And trebuchets. Come on, 11 trebuchets left. Use them. Cut the enemy supplies off. Cut anything off. The rotations from Team Kit and from behind is coming very heavily. And if Lamaland will not use trebuchets here, I think it will be over. 2 minutes and 30 seconds left. Not too much time left to push. Yeah, totally. And we can see that there's continually being a few players being killed. As, uh, ooh, and the supplies. This, this might be big, uh, General. Yeah, for these trebuchets, right in the middle, they is going to take a little bit of the units here. Unfortunately, Brave Hack and no more units, he's just alone, going to probably die in a moment. And yeah, Lamalands, even though the plus was there, uh, the idea was there, the plan was there, the units were there, they took so much time and were so disorganized, that in my opinion, this is what uh, made them pretty much lose all the, all the push here. Mark trying yeah. to push. For the totally. We saw at the beginning that they wanted to go in from different sides, looked amazing, but uh, after a while they just were too split up maybe, um, as they tried to continue to cap the, cap the final, but we see that they are still so close to units, so with a minute 30 left, let's see if they can get this supply on the right side and still make a quick push, but they need to be so, so fast on this one. Yes, and it seems like the timing is very... Very good, like not bad for the attackers. Lamaland just spawned in with a lot of people in front of the main gate and they are going to rush the main cap. And we have a lot of units also coming here from the right side. Unit wise, it's very similar. Trebuch, still 10 of them used, not used. This should be already here. Come on, place it somewhere. Use it at least somewhere. One minute left. Why are you keeping so much trebuchets? Yeah, they just gotta drop those, and they are actually two players short on Lama Land. Brave Hakan as well as uh, Marv is down, so this might be a big difference in the end as well. Yeah, currently it's actually four, only 11 alive from Lama Land versus 15 Team Kit and full defense. They are not allowing them to even come to the last point. Very nice advances all around, stopping the advance, the push from the Lama Land here in this corner. Lama Land having much more units here, they are slightly getting the upper hand, but it's taking so much time that it will not allow the Lamaland team to pressure the last point. That's... Yeah, it just too late. We finally see traps coming in on the final, but uh, we see some players on the left supply as well, but they didn't even need it. So you gotta wonder what they, what they were thinking here. As yeah. they do manage to get through, but it's too late, right? Yeah, what we, what we said a moment ago. They're coming in, they had this nice idea, nice pull, but too few trebuchets, too slow on the movement and not aggressive enough. Yes, they captured, they reached the last point, that's great, but unfortunately one more minute is missing. Maybe, only maybe, if they would be able to defend the towers at the beginning and not lose this additional minute or, or, or two minutes for the push, maybe this would allow Lamaland to take a win here. But yeah, with, with, such, a, with such a small time left, they were not able to get it pushed through and they were able to win it. So, moving now to the statistics shortly, uh, we have Brave Hakan on MVP on Lama Land and once more a lot of unit kills, 200. This we'll have to check later on, but I believe this is record for the tournament, 200 kills so far. Very good job. 236 for the statistics, so fighting till the end, 3 deaths, nice thing, nicely done. Another points, uh, key, key highlights here will be 3 kills on Isaacs and Kepa, Kodain, Marv and Silent also having two more kills. 10 assists on Bedir, good job here. And for the units, only one more player crossed 100 mark, Silent one, nicely done. When it comes to the Team Kitten, we have MVP in the player, he's 406, so very nicely, uh, very nice stats and 189 units on top of that. So very, very well played from, from Fire. Then we can also see Avenger and Tizi having over 100 units. 
And when it comes to the kills, we can see Kisash Pisash, four kills, one death. I want to, I would like to see if all of these kills were hero kills or unit kills, but uh, definitely nicely, nicely done with the with the dual blade. He didn't die as as much as as we could expect. So so nicely, nicely done. Yeah, quite so. And uh, like you said, Brave Hakan putting in the numbers there is trying to get his whole team on his back, but he just couldn't do it all on his own. Um, he actually was dead uh, before the final push three times, so he, he couldn't participate in that final fight. And as you can see, that might have been a difference for Lamaland, uh, because they seem to rely so heavily on him, at least in this attack. Whereas um, uh, Kittens, they were very good on the rotations. Um, I mean, we saw at the first game that he that he just um, they just pushed on one side, and they seems to have learned quite a bit from Lamaland. So, uh, yeah, interesting defense from Kittens, really well done. Uh, but let's take a look at the clip uh, that we have. As we can first take a look at the, at the first attack at, at A point. Mm -hmm. Yep, so uh, here we yeah, go with the clip. So, so what was so interesting to see here, I'm sorry, I was switching channels here, is that uh, Lamaland actually split up, right? Ten of them at the left side, five of them at the right side. And you can see that the right side group is just scaring kittens off. They just don't dare come closer as they get, they know they can get trapped. And this is such an effective way for them to capture this A point here. On the map, you can see that some of the cap from Team Kitten is uh, getting all the supplies, which has been impacting the, uh, the next push. But uh, very effective from Lamaland here. Not too many units were lost, but you can see there at the end, the traps come in and that's what Team Kitten was uh, scared of. Very well executed indeed. Moving on to the second one. Yeah, this is um, nothing much going on, which is what we saw in the uh, in the second part of after A, right? Uh, Lamaland tried to go left, go right, um, but they didn't really push down uh, because they apparently weren't sure where Team Kitten was. Um, and I, I wonder, General, what do you think here? Should Lamaland just have made a big push for 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 any of the supplies because? Um, Team Kitten was on the ground, but Lama Land cleared out the range really well. Um, which you can see all the dead Namcons there on the ground. And, but they were just took too long, I think, uh, to really push down the stairs and get to, to the supply there. Mm -hmm. I stopped the clip for a moment here at the end, uh, looking at the map, right, and analyzing uh, your question. Basically, Team Kitten were very nice in their defense. They played much more fluently and reacted very well to what was happening. Look at that, they had still one person at the back plus, so they are defending with one less person. There is one person defending small gate, so they have two less person to two, two, two less people to defend. So considering that, I think they were very nice. Uh, this was a very nice tactic. When you usually push or you do something in the tournament, you expect the teams to move um, together to, you know, see a blob of units here or there, you know, maybe one side, maybe two sides, maybe even sometimes they attack from three sides. But there will be a, a, a parts of, of, of map where there will be a lot of uh, red or blue color. Here, Team Kitten have chosen totally different approach. They were scared, sc scarced around whole map pretty much around the, the entry points, right? They were not at the entry points. They were harassing much more. So this is definitely a good uh, good highlight point for the Team Kitten. They have brought much more damage dealing units. But uh, yeah, they were visible a few Nankas here or there, maybe some Javelins around, and that's pretty much it. Everyone else were hidden around the corners, were hidden around the valleys, and were waiting with either pikes to counter advance, with um, cavalry from different directions. And what uh, we seen during the game itself that they bring four cavalry to the one place, but they staggered their um, the cavalry coming in like every five seconds there was another charge or something like that. So there was charge and then charge and then charge and then charge. So throughout the whole 20 seconds you had constant cavalry charges coming from all the directions and the Lamaland were not prepared for that. They countered first two or three of them very well. But the last one crushed all the remaining defense and the push was over. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you can also see in this uh, final clip that, or this clip that we just showed that um, Lamaland, of course, had pushed the A points and they were probably down with quite a few units uh, as well. And maybe they weren't 
convinced that they um, had what it took to to push for that supply because kittens did have the supply as, as we saw in the game before that uh, the short supply resupply route is just so effective on the defense here definitely uh, so maybe maybe instead of pushing directly here maybe uh, attackers should try to pressure the small gate a little bit more because the pluses on small gate uh, when you look at the small gate both of the pluses for attacker and for defender are approximately the same size so this could be much more balanced but uh, yeah. uh, that's one thing and the second thing is actually the trebuchets here you cannot use your biggest advantage you have trebuch anywhere on the left plus right on the behind uh, the plus behind the, the wall and that whatnot it's quite open and maybe you cannot use it everywhere but there is a lot of places where you potentially could use the trebuchet and this could be a game changing so yeah this is this is maybe if anyone else will be playing on that map maybe a thing to consider um all right for now let's move to the discussion screen as we'll have next match in four minutes the tiebreaker as you know right now it's one one so it's totally equal on both ends we'll be starting in four minutes Breaker on the field map CB. What can we expect from the teams over there? Absolute chaos, I think. It's going to be so exciting. Uh, we saw last time, uh, last week, when we also had a tiebreaker, which is great, right? Uh, we we know that these teams are paired up so well against each other. We, we saw it in the, siege, in the siege battles. So let's see how they do in the field battle as well. I, I, I love it. Um, I think it's really interesting. We saw last time that uh, both teams decided to push for the right flank, for their respective right flank with uh, 10 men and put 5 men on the other side. And then they kind of crisscrossed to the, to the end cap and one team was quicker than the other. Um, uh, yeah, I'm so curious. Uh, we've seen quite a lot of uh, armors being played, of course, because we're going to play on, on a big field map. Um, but then again, we saw that um, last week the second attack so to speak um took a long time to get set up so i wonder if the, these teams have learned from last week and come up with different ideas to approach this uh, this tiebreaker match mm -hmm. and uh, i want to see if we will have a uh, weather as a deciding factor as well last time there was very 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 cloudy right there was a lot of mist and the visibility on the field map was very low so considering that not only we had a hard time casting it not only you guys had a hard time viewing it watching it but also the teams the captains right had a hard time uh, shot calling making the calls making commands you know adjusting the strategy observing the units and things like that on this map when you go out to the b point you can see from very far away what units enemy is bringing with uh, such a low visibility you can see it yes but only you know 10 seconds later which can be already crucial to have this have this changed you know your, your tactic adjusted or you know do do something to, to counter enemy movement right even as important things as how many players are driving is it three or is it five these two guys could be you know somewhere else winning for your team right or, or do something different so definitely this is uh, this is something that we will need to watch out the weather absolutely absolutely so we have we have two more matches for today coming, right? This one being the tiebreaker will decide who is going to take the first place from the group, first seed. This is very important because later on, um, when there will be quarterfinals, uh, first seed team will fight against second seed from another uh, group. So if potentially the, the best team, let's say, will advance as the first place, they will have a, a little bit higher chance of winning because they will be playing against the second place team from other group. So definitely it's worth going out of the group as a first one. Uh, we'll see if the, if the teams will, will fight, uh, how strong they will commit and fight for, for this first place in the field map. Absolutely. And I think this group might be very important because uh, if we, I remember correctly, they have to face uh, against uh, group C. Yes. And we know that in Group C there are some veteran tournament uh, teams with uh, and Gignum and Pondguard. Um, so it's very important to get out of the group first and get the weaker of the of, of that group, I think. Definitely, definitely. 
Uh, after the yeah, Levanoga over time, the tiebreaker will be here in a moment, and after the tiebreaker, we will be jumping to the just for fun match with uh, that match, right? So no pressure, but uh, for your viewing pleasure, as we have one less team, we will have the uh, we will have the the that match uh, match at the end. Uh, lobby is open. Uh, players are starting to roll into the game. So very shortly we'll be starting the tiebreaker on the Emerald River. Uh, a little bit more on the map. If you are not aware, Emerald River is one of the, in my opinion, mm, most balanced maps because it's almost fully mirrored uh, in, from the tournament or like uh, you know ski, like uh, gameplay perspective. From the visual perspective, it's very different. Therefore, it is nice uh, that. Uh, that, that this, this map is, is chosen. One side, for example, right, A, A point, I believe, is uh, very uh, very high up on the mountain. The C point on the other end is very down low on the on the on the valley. And the, the difference in height, you know, is very uh, pleasuring to watch and, and the scenery is nice. But then from the gameplay perspective from the team, both teams, you know, one team have a shorter distance to A point. Other teams have a shorter walk distance to the C point, so this is like equal distances, therefore mirrored in a in a point uh, placement, nicely, uh, nicely, nicely chosen map, definitely for the tournament. Yeah, it makes for very interesting games, at least the game I should say, because we've only seen this once in a tournament scene. Um, something interesting that we noticed last week was that um, uh, I think it was Nexus that actually sent one person. Uh, to the B point as well, um, which is smart because then you get one more point because no one else was contesting it. Um, so teams have to be really smart about um, where they expect the enemy to be, and they can always send one person somewhere else and hope uh, it's a free point cap. But you only also only need one person to counter cap it, of course. Yes. And uh, I can see in the chat that uh, Kiwi Choco is actually in the chat here uh, watching the stream as well. He played uh, Fractal Riots last week on the field battle. He, he must have enjoyed it because they won, of course. Um, so great having you here as well as watching the game. Welcome, welcome. Learning uh, opponents, I guess, for the further stage <laughs> of the tournament. I mean, the, you know, the whole uh, uh, information, just like uh, the tournament here is just like uh, the, the football uh, league or whatever, right? Sport, uh, competitive sport, pretty much, right? You can win with your skill. You can win with um, some luck, okay? But then also, why not give um, or why not increase the chance of winning with capturing the information about the enemy, watching their uh, other uh, games, what they played on the tournament? Um, actually, there is a lot of content creators across the players uh, who, who are playing in the tournament. So they are making some strange uh, videos on YouTube about some, you know, specialized tactic, right? So maybe. Um, capturing some some of those uh, before the tournament uh, and you know being ready already for, for that could be a crucial thing when we are fighting here on such a high level stage with so many very skilled players so all this uh, you know information capturing can definitely be a game changer yeah totally we also do our preparation we try to uh, at least I try to watch uh, most games, and it helps so much to understand the team, right? You you get to see what they play, what units they like, and you can think about counters. Mm -hmm. And we've seen, uh, even in this last C2 game series, which was so interesting to me, I'm def definitely going to rewatch it. We saw Lamaland using a, a strategy for Harbor City that was really effective. We saw uh, Dan Kittens actually using a similar strategy to then attack Lamaland, but Lamaland had uh, a counter as well. And um, um, yeah, so it's so interesting to see how those teams adjust to each other. And if you just know more about the other enemy team, it's an advantage for sure. Yeah. Even between two games, you can see differences. Yep. And we are in the lobby. We are waiting for one last player to join in the lobby. Mm, probably he is just uh, changing some some stuff around in the build or or whatnot. Uh, because yeah. Sieges or siege maps are totally different than uh, field maps, right? There is much higher spaces and uh, there is no attacker and defender, right? Both teams are equal on that side, especially considering that the game that we'll be playing 
um, is uh, focused on capturing the main base, yes, but to do it, you need to capture some of the points. So there are two ways you can win here, right? Um, I mean, at the end, who has the more points at the end uh, wins, who has the less uh, loses, but um, to capture the main point, you need to unlock it. How do you unlock it? You need to either have two points uh, captured, any of the ABC two points, if you capture them, you can unlock the last point, or if you have all three of them, the points will also drop. So we will see it in the game. Let's jump right now to the uh, to the game. Uh, I need to switch for a moment, like so, the teams. And yes, we are having the team kitten as blue and llama land as red. CB, what can you tell us? Yeah, for units we're seeing Armigus, of course, but also still a lot of infantry. This time, every single player on at least the kitten side has got Armigus uh, ready to go. And I think Lamaland is slowly switching, but we're still seeing a lot of infantry uh, going to be used as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly pikes, though. Mostly pikes uh, continue to be played here. Uh, yes, and then also for the weapons, we can see that we have a spear player coming in. So uh, a lot of mobility uh, definitely will be will be nice will be nice to have here. Uh, so we shall see if this will if this will bring up and uh, anything good for the uh, for yeah. the team kitten. Absolutely, and on Lamaland side, I think we got ten short shorts if I count correctly. That's a lot of short swords. Yeah, yeah, quite a lot. Quite a lot of short swords. I mean, the um, kitten also brings uh, five of those, so, so definitely interesting matchup to watch. And uh, as expected, a lot of armingers bring in for the first push. Uh, team kitten having much more because the llama land only bringing in one. So we'll see what will be the ta tactical strategy for the teams. Yeah. yeah, so that means that we can expect kittens to be quicker on the points with their units uh, and Lamaland will be a little slower. So I wonder how they will split up uh, the map. So the weather is a little bit better, at least it's a day, not an evening, right? Uh, you can see a little bit more, not that much more. But uh, yeah, for now, seems like, let me enlarge the map as well. Seems like the focus will be on A and B for Lamaland, for the red team. Blue team from Team Kitten, C and B. So mirrored, uh, mirrored movement from the teams, but very aggressive push from Lamaland here, capturing B already and not even allowing the Team Kitten to do anything. Um, team Kitten, on the contrary, they are bringing the Imperial Archibuzers. They are a very good unit when shooting the equal distance and you know even long long distances. So they can be good thing to to put a pressure over here and they are slowly moving in with their units right now. Um, Team Kitten advancing slowly, Lamaland reacting a little bit with the shields. Three times shields and only one Imperial Pike, so not that much damage. We have some supporting archers in the back, but uh, the fight is exactly in the middle right now. And it seems like Lamaland having much more manpower here is going to get ahead and they are slowly pushing the Team Kitten away. Yeah, absolutely, we can see the kills dropping. Uh, there's the kill from one of the players from uh, Team Kittens. And uh, actually, we can see the fossil on the wall on the top of the hills as well. They're trying to dish out the damage. Um, we can see on the final that uh, Team Kitten is actually keeping one player there to keep it safe as it's at risk currently for a few seconds. So they know what they're doing. Um, on the sides, it's still equal. There's just one player from Team Kitten staying on the C point and one player from uh, Lamaland staying on the A point as they are continually continually going for the for the B point. Yeah, uh, one difference is over here. I would say that Team Kitten are pushing very heavily from the C point to try to contest this supply point. And uh, yeah, right now it's 1v1 left. Sorry, it's 2 yeah, 1v2. So maybe they will be able to hold on it. And then we have some static defenders on C from Team Kitten. And likewise, on the other side of map, we have some static defense over there from Lamaland. 
making sure that no one will back up on the A point. And uh, Team Kitten actually capturing both supply points right now. Only supply point available for Lamaland is in their back and base. So this is something that can be crucial in the long term. If they will not be able to heal and resupply, they will not be able to fight anymore, right? So we will see where it where it will go. Yeah, absolutely. We can see the units they um, are getting still the same actually. It's about 150 killed for both teams. Um, so nothing too much going on there yet. Uh, we have seen quite a few players being killed on the Team Kitten side, so Lamaland has done a good job there. But nothing major yet as we wait to see where the next fight is going to break out. Mm -hmm. And it seems that the next, next fight is going to be on a, on a B point in a moment. Team Kitten preparing their attack once more. They are once more bringing some Archibuzers. This time it's Yanniseris. So Yanniseris, how they work. The longer they are set up and shooting in same direction, the more accurate they are, right? So this is good. They are bringing him here because they will be shooting better and better and better over time and getting this buff coming in. They are also having Namkans to support some of the damage dealing. And uh, yeah, they are covered right now with one Albert Sergeants. This is very good defensive unit. They can stand a lot of damage and even more archers shooting from the top. So. The longer it goes, the the more advantage Team Kitten gets with all the ranged units they bring. Yeah, absolutely. And meanwhile, Team Kittens got beat at the supply that uh, they just got. And the Lamaland is taking back control there. They're playing the final musket that's on it. Um, so they got back, but let's go back to B point. Yeah, in the B point, as said earlier, Team Kitten having the advantage, they pushed out all the defenders. Two times Imperial Pikes are here, waiting just in case. Unfortunately, they are in the round position because the player was dead, so this is very problematic as many of them will die and probably will not be able to be reused. And Team Kitten, using the advantage they built up over time, pressuring very heavily on Lamaland. Lamaland only having one Pike, one Yanisari and two times Berserkers might not be enough to hold on this push. And we can see that Dual Blade with Kishash Pishash is starting, starting to put a pressure on the main point. So far it's 100 to 100 score, so it's still a draw. 7 minutes left and it's still a draw. Kishash Pishash trying to push up here. Only Brave Hakan left with one horse. So if he will be able to finish him off, they will be able to start capturing the point. Yeah, but... Uh... Team Lamaland is uh, making sure that there can be no resupplies uh, for, for this lone deal blader here. Uh, so he might get taken out pretty quickly. On the unit score, there is actually a difference uh, starting to show up. It's um, Team Lamaland that has troops dead of 340 currently, and Team Kitten has only lost 240. So there's a, a small gap to getting. Pishash Pishash very well played here. He's utilizing his uh, invisibility skill and uh, trying to do what he can with his horses to capture as much attention as he can and one person capturing attention of three people is quite a lot this should help his team but unfortunately it's not seems like team he can have overextended they try to pressure the supply point and they are going to lose to lama land the b point in a moment very good push very nicely advanced a lot of pikes a lot of shields very heavy push on lama land coming in here and uh, some cavalry even trying from Team Kitten to put a pressure, but the counter cavalry coming from Lamaland. Things like this will be staying under the control of Team Kitten for now, but not much longer. A lot of Lamaland players here and not too many units on Team Kitten. This should be captured in a second. Yeah, Team Lamaland continues to make plays with the calf and they seem to get enough kills by doing so. But uh, Team Kitten has definitely been playing with infantry and they show that they can be very effective with the shield and pikes and also added in some berserker flavor to make pushes on the B point just now as they try to get across the bridge once more. Mm -hmm. So we can see a bit different approach to the map. We can see one constant static Brave Hakan defender on the last point. He's doing this to make sure that the team will not lose even the slightest point. Even if they will lose 0 0.0001 uh, capture point, it, they will be playing in disadvantage. Right now it's a tie, it's 100 to 100 as you can see on top. So this is definitely a good idea to bring someone statically on the point and ensure that no backup from dual blades will happen. 
Yeah, and I do wonder if uh, any team is going to try and go for uh, the, the side points. Um, so far, we have seen that they continue to fight over B, uh, which we might see because they did not bring a, a lot of calf, so they might be slow, too slow if they go for the side points. They might lose B and then the team can push for the final. Mm -hmm. And this is still very uh, heavy on units, right? We can see 900 versus 800 units. A lot of units still available, only four minutes left. So some of the team, one of the team, have to think about something to win this match. Right now, Team Kitten decided that they want to ensure that the B stays in their end. So they have put a lot of pressure on the point, cleared a lot of the defenders. Lamaland, many of their players moved back to the supply point as we watched a moment ago to heal up to resupply switch units, and this. All in the defense was captured by Team Kitten uh, uh, captains and was decided to push and B is falling to their hand. So right now again Team Kitten advantage, two points for their side and uh, that's it. We can see some flank coming in from Marv with Cavalry, we'll see how effective it will be. I guess not that much because Avenger already spot him so they will be preparing for that. Aideria once more again. Same route, coming with the cavalry, they are trying to capture as many units as they can in the back, creating some chaos, moving around. Yeah, but meanwhile, because some players from uh, Team Kitten had to go to the back, the uh, Lamaland is pushing again on the front and they are starting to push through the infantry there to see the Arminger charge getting catched by five and Imperial Pike advance. And we can see this back and forth continu continuously as, uh, let's see, Lamaland is trying to get the left supply from the bridge, but it's getting countered well by Kittens. Yes, and, and we can... The units is still equal. Uh, it's very, very much equal. 100 units difference is not that much. We can see that there is a small pressure being applied to the C point over here. Uh, where is the player? I'm not seeing him. Ah, okay, because he was invisible. Nice. So we were seeing Goat over there on invisibility, trying to pressure the point, but it was dependent, so he had to move away as he didn't have any units. On the A point on the other end, uh, it seems like Team Kitten also trying to look what's going there, but it's defended, so I guess it will not be captured. Right now B point is being retaken once more by Lamaland, so we'll see if they will be successful at that. The problem is that, yeah, they have 100 to 100 points. So we'll see if they will be able to So if you look at this, uh, Team Kitten has actually managed to infiltrate with two members of them on the left supply and they are pushing for the final. So they might uh, be successful in getting a few seconds. Yes, and they are pushing very aggressively with Cavalry, so this might be the game changer. Uh, seems like, yes, they will be doing this. Unfortunately, they have only 8 seconds, I believe, to capture it, because as you can see on top, the cap point will close in a moment. The enemy has lost their and it's closed. So even though the idea was there and uh, it was a good idea, the timing was per very bad and it was executed not that good, so unfortunately still 100 to 100 points we can observe. Yeah, so only a minute left here, this might be so close. Um, there's two points in control of Lamaland right now. If they get the C point, they will also start dropping the percentage of uh, Team Kittens. So this might be a, a way for them to manage to get the win within a minute. But they're also starting to push for the final uh, right now. Yeah, if only they would see what we see, right? C point absolutely undefended. One person, if he would cop here and cap it, they would be able to still win it. But yeah, looking at 30 seconds left, seems like we'll be going into tiebreaker too. For now, the Lamaland players tried to create some pressure at the last cap, but Inky Tan knew what they had to do. They defended it and it was there. Yeah, these teams are so equally, equally matched, uh, the units count might be different than troops alive but troops dead it's uh, 800 on both sides very equal and same for the uh, the heroes killed both sides having a lot of heroes with two deaths um but it's it's really close still Yeah, so we'll have to discuss what's uh, what's next. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we'll have to do so. For now, yeah, we don't have any 
and uh, one in victory. I mean, at the end, the uh, Lama Land had B point and A point, so they had more capture points captured and held. Uh, so this is definitely some kind of advantage. Uh, sorry, I went out of the screen already and uh, it showed the stats. Sibi, are you still in the game? Uh, yes. Could you screenshot I... the stats, please? Uh, yeah, I can. I will. And send them to me on the PM, so we will take a look at them on the moment. Yeah, you got them already. So um, for Team Kitten, we can see Cometa on the musket. He was the MVP. He got 89 unit kills two, and two hero kills. Uh, Avenger on the team is the one with the highest unit kills. Really well done, 132. Um, didn't get any hero kills, but if you get over 100 unit kills in a, in this game, that's pretty good. On the side of the Lama Land, we see Silent One, also a musket player, getting the MVP with two hero kills and only 48 unit kills. Uh, but this participation is huge. He must have been on the points for, for quite a long time. And then we see Sexy Kebab and XI, is it? With over 100 unit kills for Team Lala Lens, and uh, they've been dishing out the damage during the game for their team. Yeah, definitely. So, stats are now seen on the screen, so you can still uh, look at them if you wish to. Uh... Sorry for that, I, I mis misclicked immediately as I was writing something, but yeah, nice nice kills all around. I guess it's very well balanced, I mean, Avenger is yeah, standing out as you said, and, and there are on Lama Land and uh, two players over 100, but other than that, very well balanced uh, unit kills across the land. Uh, yeah, so we are talking right now with the um, with the other casters. What's what's going to happen? Uh, so give us give us a moment. I mean, the game itself was definitely interesting. A lot of things to happen. Um, this was much more um, maybe cold or uh, uh, static than what we have seen from the tiebreaker previous time. Right? This time, basically. The time tiebreaker went uh, pretty much everything happened around the B point, so there was a lot of uh, a lot of fighting definitely and a lot of things uh, things happening, but uh, not uh, not not that crazy, but not that many crazy stuff happening around. My dog also woken up. He wasn't ready for for uh, so many games today, I guess. Hello, to show yourself, get <laughs> It's time for the dog here. Yeah, we need him. it's time for the dog. Yes, hello, Mr. Dog. Mr. Dog is not unfortunately playing the in the tournament. He was sleeping. He was supposed to play, but yeah, he, he slept over. Oh, Mr. Dog. Ah, yeah. So I mean. Definitely very interesting, definitely interesting matches today. And, uh, I mean, there was quite a lot of cavalry all around. Um, but uh, CB, did you capture who was uh, using the who was using the cavalry better in your perspective from what we have seen so far? Well, good question. Um, Which team? I think that. Um, well, it's so hard to say. I think Team Lowland, um used it better. In the end, they tried to go around quite a bit as well, whereas I think Team Kitten was the one that was going from the, from the front uh, quite a bit, and it was caught too many times too easily, maybe by the, by the pikes. Um, we can see it also in the unit thread, so there's a few more people on the Lemonland side with uh, really high unit kills, over 100. But then again, it was so equal. So both players have used their cap quite well, I think. But no, it, it didn't impact the game as much, much as you might expect because um yeah in, in the end it was again so equal on the on the unit count and they didn't really manage to push through to the final quick enough so i wonder if maybe uh either team would uh, prefer to play maybe even more calf to or maybe start with infantry and then switch to calf once you get a far supply and push to the final we saw 
Lemma Land, I think, tried to do it with two players as well, or was, or was Team Kitten that tried to do it with two players? Uh, but they were just a little too late on the timing. So yeah, it's 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 interesting. This is this game has been so different compared to the other one. And do we have confirmation about the about this game yet? Uh, still waiting for the final thing since we have the idea of what's going to happen, but. Uh, uh, Waiting for the waiting for the final final confirmation from the back stage. My dog woke up and unfortunately he wants to eat my desk, so I hope it doesn't create any background noise for you. Uh, yeah, and uh, even so, we will still have the. We we'll still have the that much plant, right? Optional that much for other other yeah. other guys. Uh, yeah. So artillery. I was surprised actually with um, with so heavy usage of uh, Imperial Arquebusers, you know. They are slow unit, uh, they're easy to kill, they don't have too much defenses, so it's quite problematic to keep them alive. Yes, they deal a lot of damage, and I like them because of that, but for that kind of reason it's not... Uh, yeah, the mobility and the health is, is quite uh, few, uh, poor from, from them, so... From that perspective, I was quite amazed that they bring, I think, even two or three from the Team Kitten. It's like two or three units of, of uh, Imperial Archibuzers. Yeah, quite surprising, but I think um, the team showed us why they picked it, because at the, we could see at the bridge at B, it is very effective. Um, uh, we could continue, continue to see that uh, once the shields were down, and when, while well, they were pushing the range, kept coming in and they killed all the pikes um so yeah it's um it makes sense right in what you see it on the map uh yeah i mean the first the first uh, unit died quite fast because there was a not, not enough of the coverage right so um, yes uh, bringing uh, bringing um, such a high high damage dealer, dealer fragile unit makes sense but then uh, not covering it enough doesn't right so i think this is a yeah, mistake exactly. from thinking them I would love to see uh, them used more more aggressively, and then instead of having two or three Nankans units behind um, covering everything, right? Maybe exchange one of these Nankans to additional shield unit and dedicate it to covering the Imperial Archibuzers. That might have worked uh, much much better. Uh, so yeah, from from that perspective, I guess. There are. This is something to 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 work on better. And then on the other end, for Lamaland, uh, to point out one of the things I, I noticed would be the the problem with the rotations, right? You seen on the B point, um, Lamaland uh, when they captured the point, right, and they decided they want to go and heal, they did it in a such a big amount of people uh, that they lost the point pretty much for free. And uh, even though they have not moved back everyone, right? So they left like 20% of the players and 20% of the units um, from the B point, right? On, on the defense of the B point and then moved everyone else to here. While this happened, Team Kitten just moved in, captured the point and cleared out pretty much for free all the units. And uh, when they were back, they had to recapture it once more. So in my opinion, either split it more, so like leave 60% uh, people alive and then, you know, move the healing people back, or maybe you can move the people to heal and replace units in, in like two uh, waves, right? So move one more, move one part of, of people, and then when they will be coming back, then start moving other one, right? So it will be more balanced. Even um, Things are important, especially that we had much, but much better weather. Uh, even so, 
um, you know, like visibility of units, right? If you have much more units walking around, much more players riding around, it gives a, for other team, it can give a, you know, a, a show of force over there, right? That they can, you know, expect a much better, much bigger uh, uh, threat. Instead, what they seen, right? Team Kit and they just come in, they see like one or two units over there. Okay, easy cap, let's just run them down. And that's what they did. It was done actually like two times, I believe, at least from what we have captured, maybe even more. So mm -hmm. balancing a little bit supplies might be better one on the uh, Lama Land end. Okay, so uh, we have the final decision right now. We'll be moving into the deathmatch shortly. Before that, we are going to talk with the team leaders um, uh, with a short short uh, discussion. Uh, the final standings are so far. Lama Land have captured, at the end, they had two points in their possession. So they would be the winning one. Unfortunately, they have, uh, by mistake, placed a mortar or two. And uh, they have shot one of it. They have not hit anything, but they have shot one of it, and the artillery is strictly forbidden. Uh, therefore, we decided that uh, because of the, the break uh, break rule, right, the, uh, they will be going to the loss on that. Uh, so, Lamaland is uh, is second place, and Team Kitten first place. Uh, Vero asking if Eden lost all the matches. Uh, Eden unfortunately was not able to uh, show up, right? So yesterday they informed us that they will not have enough players and they need to get out of the tournament. So basically they lost uh, the whole tournament already, right? So yeah, that's, exactly. that's what happened. So what a great finish uh, for uh, Team Kittens then. They managed to get first place in this group. Um, even if it was by a mistake from Lamaland, maybe, but we have seen that these teams are so equal. We have also seen it in the uh, post-game chat in-game. They uh, they are already saying, "Let's meet up in finals again." They really enjoyed this these three games, and uh, I do hope we maybe see them in finals again because this uh, th these three games have been uh, very very close, very good. Mm -hmm. And you can see the final standing right now on the screen. So we have Kitten first place, Lamaland second place. And uh, as you said, CB, that's something uh, that was the main highlight of today, I guess, the team play and the all um, spirit, right? So not only um, Team Kitten when they had uh, one person disconnecting and couldn't go back, right? The remake was done, both teams agreed immediately, no issues, no problems, so perfect uh, show of, you know, the the you know, respect for other teams as well, right? And for, for the whole tournament, for all of you viewers to make sure that the match will be even. And if they win, great. But if they lose, right, they want to make sure that they do it on the you know, even even ground, right? So, so that that's good. And right now, as you said, right, even though one player forgot and probably by mistake just placed one artillery, there was a, no no hate and, you know, Good, good game, well played. Uh, see you in the finals and and all the very nice and interesting uh, information third uh, round. So uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Shall we invite the team leaders? Yes. So we will right now discuss with the team leaders uh, for a short interviews, and then uh, then we will be. Hello, to the I just moved everybody here. Yep, yep. Hello, guys. Yeah, okay. Okay. Perfect. Hello, hello, everyone. So we have Metacan and Padlo. If you could, guys, could introduce yourself. My name is Ivan, not Padlo. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am from uh, Team Kittens. So any questions that you have? And uh, sorry for my English, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. That is uh, very rarely we meet uh, someone who is, you know, native yeah, English yeah. speaker. No problem. I, I, can, I can tell you something about our game if you want. Uh, yeah, just in a moment. Uh, we also have Metekan, right? Representing Lamaland. Hello, Mete. Hello, Combo. Hello, all. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Uh, from the Lamaland. So I'm just here to speak. Do you, normally our leader, team leader is Loan. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for all the organization. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, man. 
Uh, okay, so let's move to the first question uh, to the King, Team Keaton. Congratulations on taking the first place. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, how, um, or maybe out of the three matches, which one did you like the best? Uh, one more time, which battle? Yes, out of the three battles there were to there, which one did you like the best? One more, I didn't understand. Three battles? Yes, you, you played three battles, right? You had two sieges so, so, and so, one. Three, okay, three. Which one? So which was the, the best in your opinion? <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, of course, second one, okay, <laughs> because <laughs> because it was it was a total win. Uh, yeah, yeah, second one, of course. <laughs> okay, and uh, anything specific about this game other than, of course, your victory? Did you like uh, how you like uh, something worked well for you? No, no, it it it, it wasn't easy, you know. You know, I like mm -hmm. it just because just because of win. It it, it wasn't easy uh, because you know uh, we have only uh, se uh, seven hundred leadership, yeah. So we must uh, take one uh, must uh, take uh, blue troops, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the first battle, when we see uh, how the guys used uh, firemen's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. which uh, <clears throat> we was we was very surprised. And uh, maybe we make a mistake and we take uh, such units uh, for our presets in the second battle, yeah? And uh, we didn't use them so good, like guys from Blamaland, you know? <laughs> okay. Everybody, uh, every battle was very hard and very interesting for us. Okay. One question from my side. Um, did you expect it, that Blamaland was such a hard enemy for you? No, no, it was, it was a very big surprise, you know. <laughs> very, 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 very big surprise for all my team, you know. We have many experienced players, very experienced players. And uh, they were surprised too, you know. So it was very interesting. Okay, um, cool. Uh, so now moving back uh, to Metacam, Metacam from Lamaland. Uh, uh, congratulations as well. You are advancing to quarterfinals, so second place, but but definitely well well played. Um, so maybe what is your opinion on the second game then, where you have lost the uh, attack? I'll think to Ivan. Ivan is right. Is Ivan? Yep. yep. Ivan thinks for him honestly. And actually, to be honest, in in my opinion, the second battle was the best for me too. But because it was kind of harder uh, attack, always much more fun. I think we lost just because we couldn't use our advantages. Uh, we could use more or advantage, so we just missed some points. But we did the last push. That was also good. We already know our enemy, but unfortunately, we also know they solve our. Uh, combination at the first begin and we knew it they will use some of our units so that's why we make some change in the team but so it was a hard attack so they already experienced people we all know it and they defend very well cool thank you very much uh cb any questions yeah, from I, got a, I got a question to you for your meta um we saw that after you captured the a point you were on the on the stairs you got five guys on the right side and ten guys on the left side and uh we believe that you couldn't really see kittens and it you really took a long time before you finally went down the stairs what 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 were your what was your team discussing at that point can you tell us actually uh, um i'm not sure i should tell about that because we weren't talk about the game at that moment <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are not focused enough on the game, and that's that's why you so, took so much time. That. that makes sense. Okay, okay. Yeah, thanks. And uh, then for uh, uh, for uh, for Team Kittens uh, coverage, um, we saw that you uh, captured all the supplies at the at the backside. Was it something you had planned for? Uh, yeah, it was a plan, but it, we make it later. Then we discussed. You know, uh, at first uh, we have uh, uh, we think that we can use our calf, go out, you know, and to kill much troops, you know. But uh, after uh, <clears throat> we decided to uh, to stay in the in, in the in defense, yeah, 
and it's our one of our uh, raid leaders go out you know <laughs> he, he make it in the ranked matches he made it in the siege you know he knows how to do it you know <laughs> so we send one experienced guy yeah uh, uh, to bite them you know mm -hmm. okay and thank you uh, so and do we have any other questions from the caster team uh, i had one question uh that appeared uh, with uh, the Twitch chat of the German cast. Um, and it's about the rule of the free death and you're out. Are you happy with that rule or uh, do you think it it's a big disadvantage for for the team who... Um, so like, you did you lost the first match because two players of you were out of the game? And uh, did you lost the second game because uh, three players of your team were out? So on the side of Kitten and um, Lamaland? What do you think, Matt and then Pablo? Uh, I can answer that question. Actually, rules was uh, totally good. And uh, I didn't. See, we didn't see any unbalanced rule, or uh, actually, they all was logic and all fine for us. Okay, but we didn't uh, lose just because of rules, um, because we couldn't focus enough. That's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I also think that this uh, that, that rules are logical. You know, uh, I didn't say that our players play more carefully because of that rule. No, no, it's not that like that uh you may play uh, and use your brain more maybe you know mm -hmm. so so uh, three, three lives is enough okay i want to thank someone uh thank you kepa uh, thank you so much my friend for this game it was so fun and thank you all guys for the organization cool nice to meet you all Thank you very much. Yeah, guys. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Yeah. So, congratulations on your battles today and on advancing to the quarterfinals to both of you. And uh, we will be meeting shortly in the friendly death match, uh, just to top it off, right? Okay. It will be seven, seven with seven or five with C five. How much? Uh, I think you can put everybody in. Yeah. How many people you have? We can put in. Uh, yeah, it's we, fifty. We have, we, 50. Have already, we have already five people. You know. Okay, so we can make yeah. it five v five. Oh, or awesome. maybe if uh, Matt, if you have more than five, you can balance it out. So it can be you, know, you can place some people here in the both teams, as you wish. Uh, it's up to Ivan, how, however he wants. Uh, we can my mix. guys want to play five v five, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so let's see the five in versus five in the moment. Thank you very much, then, guys, and uh, good you. luck in the see you later, guys. in Thank the you, further Thank stages. You so much. See ya. Bye bye. Okay, guys, you heard it yourselves, right? Uh, both teams very happy about the about the whole tournament, about the games today. So definitely glad that we were here together, right? Enjoying this. Uh, what we have ahead right now is will be a five v five um, tournament. Uh, sorry, five v five death match. Uh, just just for fun. And then after that, we will make a final and uh, make a lottery for the betting, right? So in about a minute or, or so, we'll be starting with the um, with the teams. And I need to take a short break. So CB, if you could tell us, uh, considering how last week the death match went, what could we expect right now? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last week was uh, was the first for me to cast the death match, so uh, exciting. Uh, hope it goes better in the next one. But last week, what we saw was uh, a lot of heavy armor, short swords, uh, long swords, um, and some malls uh, to in front line, and then muskets or short bows in the back. Uh, we saw Xayeron really impressing us on his uh, musket skills. He definitely showed on that day that he was the best musket player, at least between the teams of Eclorites and uh, Nexus. So, and we also saw today during the games uh, that the musket players really kept bringing in the kills for their team. So I definitely expect expect muskets uh, to be played for the death matches. They are so good in dueling. And then the short forts, uh, they're so tanky. Uh, we know that they are great. We know that they bring a lot of CC, they bring a lot of tankiness. So they are great uh, in those death matches as well. 
Uh, we saw the first Dual Blade today on the, during the game as well. I think it was played by Goat on, uh, from Lamaland. I hope we, we got to see another Dual Blade as they might be. I believe it was Kisha Spishas from the Kita. Yeah, I, I think uh, Goat also changed to, to ah, okay. during the match uh, after a while, but uh, I'll, I'll, we'll check later if, if that's correct. But it was definitely Kisha Pisha that was on the Dual Blades uh, in, the, in the second match, yeah. And he also started in the third match, but I think one of them uh, switched to Dual Blades as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we'll see some of those uh, during yeah. the, that match. Okay, so lot based open, people are starting to flow in, uh, so we can we can definitely uh, get this uh, get this up and running shortly. Uh, we are still waiting for like two or three players, but yeah, we'll be able to start in a moment. Uh, Mystic betting is unfortunately already closed. You can beat bet every weekend, every Sunday, sorry, uh, pretty much right before the first game starts. So. Uh, Today we are closed, but uh, in upcoming days, sure, why not? Next Sunday, right? We still have four Sundays of the games, guys, in front of us. So definitely still a lot of the chances to, to win something. Yeah, we only just got started, General. It's amazing. Yeah. Already two amazing groups being played. Two, two, two Sundays only and so many emotions already. So, so many highlights, so many what the hell moments and that whatnot, right? So yeah, last time I think for me the la what the hell moment was this back uh, back cavalry charge in one match. And another match was this uh, fake supply point push. And today for you, what was the this what the hell moment? Oh uh, well, in the first game I was so impressed by Lama Land and how they showed that you can bring a diverse team to the game. Uh, I was really impressed in how they played. I definitely didn't expect them to to win that A defense on the first uh, first game. And then I I totally loved how on the second game we saw how well uh, Team Kitten suggested and there was this back and forth with the rotations. J that just in general was so amazing for me today to, to see it play out like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Oh, hang on. I have to go to the lobby. Yeah, please, uh, please do. Right. Yeah, so that, that, that was really impressed from, impressing for me, and um, I also, we will probably discuss this later, but um, I think today we saw uh, that Kev, again, wasn't that effective quite often. Um, we'll have to see how it continues, but then again, we saw that just only infantry from Team Kitten in the first game also doesn't work if the enemy team brings uh, Sekali and Militia or the Flamers. Uh, as we heard from uh, from the Team Kitten uh, player just now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting developments. But let's go to the deathmatch. Yeah, so we have 5v5, switching up over here uh, to the game screen. Uh, yeah, so Kishash Pishash and Goat, yeah. Two dual blades will be having and the rest of the armor. No, Cometa on the medium armor. So we will see how it will go for them right now. Yeah, no musket on the Lama Land team. I hope uh, they don't regret that after the game. Yeah, and we can see only one Hussar skin on the battle, so I am already calling the red team of Lama Land winning this with one Hussar skin only on the battle. But let's see. Right now the teams are grouping in in the middle. Sexy Kebab trying to watch the flank and Dual Blade as well coming late to the party. The battle is starting. We can see Hammer being targeted for the Lama Land. He's getting down with Khan. And two dual blades. <laughs> they just ulted themselves, so yeah. laying around. They just want to running on the side, not caring about everything else that's going on. First kills come in for Sofina. As the Ranger is trying to run away, but he's getting killed by Pretty Khan. As this deck of four dual blade joins in, killing Sexy Kebab there. Uh, this is a pretty cool game so far. Let's see, 2 on 1. Can we all the other get away? Yes, he can kill the goat player. Oh, that was good from the other. Yeah, and we see Team Kitten actually coming on top right now with 5 kills to 2 deaths, right? This is definitely a good advantage for the first kind of a battle we had seen over here. Interesting that the dual blades were not flanking 
the the uh, targets, right? Because yeah, the only target there is are either the mouse or maybe the the, the best one would be the the musket, right? But uh, yeah, the, the dual blades were not able to flank anyone, catch anyone. They were just battling it between themselves. And we see Pishash Pishash here. Very interesting suit. Trying to find his target. And they are focusing right now here on the back end on the hammer. Uh, seems like the whole team will be focusing one target. Or no, they have again switched around and will be fighting many different targets. Pishash Pishash very low. Nice, God killed him, very well played, with a little bit of help, but managed to do it. And here at the back end we can see the heavy armor brow still moving forward. For now it's one to one. He continues to dance around the team, he got caught, but then he got away. So well done by him on the mascot. Yeah, he's healing currently, so uh, very good that he was able to retrieve full HP before the fight continues. And right now we can see a lot of low HP on Lamaland and one already dead, sexy kebab killed. Coden also running around for his life with the Hussar skin. Come on, wings will give you the speed. Or will they? We'll see in a moment. Goat counter killed Kishibishi after the kill. Komita picks up another kill on Coden. And let's see if this hammer can do enough damage there. No, can't catch him. Oh, look at that. That's how you do with a figure hammer. Yeah, Avenger. Avenger may, may, making it out as well, and we can see twice the score for Team Kitten 8 to 4 still going to continue with their advantage, even moving one step further, 9 to 4. But Berserker will die, or will he not die? Oh my god, 0 HP running away, very lucky man today to live another second, and still fight is continuing. Right now, Cometa is in quite a big problem, he is not having too much support. And he cannot run away. He's low HP as well. Dual Blade will... Ah, no. Okay, the run away skill. Again. <laughs> yeah, last second. Last second jump away skill was there. Managed to survive. So very lucky from Team Kitten. Three players just just about, right? Just about with zero HP or close. Run away in one by one. So this was very, very good from their end. Very good management on that. On luck department. We'll take a short breather right now. Yeah, Seems luckily like we can. Let's see if Goat starts to heal up as well as he got that final kill. He didn't let that one get away from him. Um, Cometa leading the charge with four kills right now. Uh, he's pretty impressive on the Musketeer. As we get another fight? No, not yet. So last week we saw that um, the the team that won with Xion, they, they continually healed really quickly after each battle. And that uh, showed to be very effective because they were always full health whenever they re-engaged. We can see that both teams are waiting it out for now. Yep. I mean, uh, last time the, the fights I think were um, more constant but less intensive, right? So there were like three people fighting constantly and two healing and then they exchange and they exchange and they exchange. So this was much more uh, uh, ongoing. Here we can see... Uh, Battle and a stop, and a battle and a stop, and a battle and a pause, and it seems like they will be choosing different arena right now. Thank you very much for the viewers' pleasure. We are going to fight on the right side of the map right now, looking of course from the perspective of Lamaland as they are preparing the push. We can see that the dual blade is running around, dancing in the back, the flank, and then yeah, the fight is still continuing here. God managed to Capture Kishash Pishash first and he dies very fast, light armor disadvantage, you have no survivability. And then for the fight, Goat, vice versa, he's being caught and killed by Cometa. Very nice shooting from this player today, a lot of kills. And then the fight continues. We have seen Khan trying to infiltrate the back end. Sexy kebab with his ultimate unfortunately missed by just a slight amount of space. Berserker, very low HP, going to die in a second. He will not survive this time. No more luck for you, my friend. And then, unfortunately, Lamaland playing in big disadvantage. 3 versus 4. As the fight is happening closer to Team Kitten base, we can see that they are moving in faster with their supply. And Cometa killing Sexy kebab as well right now. Great CC there. That might turn it around as the, it looked like the Team Kitten was starting to lose it, but then the big CC on three players yeah. actually managed to get them to win there on that fight. All three have died in one spot, so this was definitely a game changer here. And we can also observe the new skin, I mean, very nice colors. 
with the with all of the tentacles flying around and uh, your helmet and so on. Very interesting skin. We will, will we see the same battle happen in the same place? Because the statistics are still the same. Two times more kills on the Team Kitten side. 16 versus 8. 8 minutes on the clock, so definitely a lot of time left to prepare and to execute what you want and how you want it. For now... But he gets again from the second one. That was so close to being well-timed. But now he's out of the fight for a few seconds, but he's already back in. As they do manage to take him down. Well done. So let's see if uh, Leveland can clear this up now Now that he's gone as a damage dealer. As we see Kisha Pisha being pushed away. He's low on health, getting chased by Betty the Khan. Uh, meanwhile, ooh, great world of greeting from Xexxi Bob. Follow up yet. As Khan then he gets down, he's killed. Yeah, good. Kometa is back with full skills and full health, so he will be he is going to deal the damage, but definitely eliminating him first gets a big advantage to the Lama Land. They eliminated the main damage dealer and uh, the plan was good, but the execution was not that great. The after after they eliminated eliminated him, they were running around a little bit. I think they are not sure on the targets. It looked like they wanted to attack this player and then move to another one and another one and this Oh my god, the goat, what did he just did? Does he get away? Looks like he might. Oh no. Oh, a very nice yeah, shot from Kometa. time to follow up on this. Yeah, I mean, Kometa just... I should. I think he should rename himself to the sniper, right? With all the headshots he has been pulling away. Uh, actually, his shot in the back and staggering the dual blade was crucial to capturing uh, him by his team and allowed this fight to go into the Team Kitten uh, favor. Right now, again, Team Kitten 4 versus 2, just pounding down what they can. And at the back, we see Kishesh Pishesh taking attention of Coden. He will not kill him that fast. I mean, dual blade versus short sword, you have to deal with a lot of armor. But he will take attention of the team uh, long enough to allow Team Kitten to clean up everything and come back and support him. So very nicely played. Yeah, quite so, as the score is uh, getting out of hand here. Komata is taking everything in his own hands here. Uh, oh, they only need four more kills for Team Kitten, as they look to close in on the Lama Land uh, base. Yeah, and the teamwork is on point from Team Kitten. As you have seen, they have even healed up at the exact same point. So this is definitely very skilled players playing together for a very long time, understanding each other perfectly, able to do what they are doing right now. And we have seen that the fight is right now in two places. One is coming here and another one is in the base. We can see Goat trying to capture Kometa and immediately Sexy Kebab trying to help him. But yeah, Kometa will be able to run away. He's still being pressured on, so cannot deal that much damage. In the meantime, the hammers from Team Kitten are pounding on Sexy Kebab. He will be dying very short if no one will help him. Kometa will just help him die sooner. That's what happened. Other than that, we have one kill left and it will be B. Yes, blue team wins, team kitten 30 versus 10. So actually triple the amount of kills. And all of them pretty much on Cometa. Look at the difference. 11, 1, 14. They made their statement that the first place is there for a reason, I guess. So good game all around. Anything to add? From your end, yeah, if you aren't convinced right now that Musket is good in duels uh, in death matches, start play playing Musket because we've seen uh, Komata last week's Ion uh, stomping everybody on the Musket here. Um, also, last week we saw that um, uh, the Glaive wasn't really effective in death match. I mean, you can bring amazing CC with Warlord's Greeting followed up by Flying Reaper, but you do need to land the combo, and if you don't, then um, it doesn't seem to work out too well for you as uh, Sexy Kebab died seven times. Um, but same for Goat. Uh, Kisha Pisha got the better of him, maybe, together with Kometa, but Goat did get uh, quite a few dual blade kills. It looked pretty exciting uh, to see that in Deathmatch again. Definitely, definitely. Uh, so, what, uh, what happened today? I mean, quite a lot, right? We've seen 1v1. Uh, sorry, one one to one uh, back to back uh, uh, fights on Harbor City. 
there were unfortunately uh, not decided, right? We didn't decide the outcome as, uh, as both teams won in the defense. Uh, both matches were quite different, meaning that uh, how both teams approached their strategy was, was quite, uh, quite, uh, quite different and uh, therefore very interesting, in my opinion. Yeah, I can agree. Um, we said it before and I'll say it again. Uh, Lamaland showed us an interesting strategy on the first attack, our uh, first defense, and then, um, yeah, we saw that Kittens had to adjust and they, they did it. And uh, we saw a very back and forth game. Uh, I'd love to get some clips ready for next week and maybe we can look back at what happened and see if the other teams um, do well coming up in the, in the following weeks. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, considering that uh, that the team have uh, that the teams have, have have played like that, and then you know the tiebreaker, we had to we had to go to the tiebreaker. CB, uh, if you would have to place your money on one of the teams today, who will win the tournament? Which team would it be? <laughs> That's such a good question. I don't know. I mean, who did you like personally? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Better. let's put it that way. I loved how kittens were able to just come back so quickly after that first loss. It was a really convincing loss in the first game. We have to remember it was 500 units difference uh, in favor of Team Lalaland. So if we're looking at the tournament where you have to keep improving yourself, I, I would give it to uh, Team Kitten for the final, if they were to face again. Okay. What about you? Uh, I asked you this question for a reason. And the reason behind it was that, uh, I don't know, to be honest, from what we, s when we played the battles, right, the sieges, I was uh, with you a little bit more leaning towards Team Kitten, even though what they shown in the attack was quite uh, strange, in my opinion, right, that they didn't have um, the balance of the units. On the units front, Lama Land was was there. Uh, but um, on the cooperation and what we heard in the uh, interview from Meta, right, that they were not that focused on the game. This brings me a little bit, you know, maybe they are not taking this serious enough. And yes, uh, today they could allow it uh, for themselves because uh, they knew early on that one of the teams is eliminated and uh, both of them will advance. But moving on to the tournament, if they will continue with the attitude, this might get very problematic very fast. Right? Uh, so uh, just just because of that, uh, I was uh, I was leaning I'm leaning more towards Team Team Kitten. Yeah, I can understand, and I, I see your point for Lamland. I mean, they also said in the interview that they knew Kitten. I don't know how they knew them, but they they clearly had a strategy in mind. And if you look at the their opponents for the groups for if yeah, for the quarterfinals. It will be uh, uh, any, uh, two teams will be from Group C, right? It's either uh, Pontgard, uh, Endgegner, or DTI, or uh, that, that will Russian Village Boys that they will phase up against. And all those teams have been playing tournaments, they've been playing games, so they can really prep well for uh, any of the teams that they will face in the quarterfinals. Um, so I wonder if they if that will bring some focus to their gameplay, maybe, and then they can impress us, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah, that's uh, so. Uh, a lot of a lot of happened today. Can't wait for more of the of the teams. And uh, yeah, we can see from on, on chat player saying that yeah, they are team kittens. Yes, so kittens, all the kittens. Uh, good luck uh, later on as well to Lamaland. Good luck on the quarterfinals, and uh, maybe a short sneak peek of what's awaiting us uh, next. Uh, next weekend so right now sharing the schedule as you can see next week we have on 2nd may on sunday same time group c playing and if you go to the challenge page or the, the official discord you can see that in this group we have three teams we have Pondgard, we have Endgegner, and we have russian village boys which are dti pretty much right they, they, they are named dti as well uh, all of these three teams Played in Ari Tournament One, so uh, there will be a lot of interesting matchups. Very highly skilled players once more, and uh, interesting uh, things to watch on. Yeah, absolutely. We know a lot about these teams. We know a lot about these players. So 
expect us to be well prepared for next week. Um, but these teams know each other also quite well, so they might be brewing on some new strategies, some new tactics. Um, so it's going to be very exciting. They might be playing on maps that they haven't played on before, perhaps. Uh, I'll have to check and see if um, any of these teams have played on one of the three maps that they could play on. Right? That might also be a factor that could be uh, very influential in the next week. Definitely. Definitely. Cannot wait. I mean, let's see what happens. And yeah, for today, I think this will be all of all of it for us together. I will do the lottery in a moment, but uh, for now, yeah, thank you very much, CB. Good, uh, well. good casting, good games, and uh, interesting, well spent Sunday. Thank you very much. Exactly. Bye bye. See you next week, guys. Everybody. Thank you. Yes. Bye bye. Okay, guys. So we can move on to the. Uh, Move on to the uh, betting competition with it. Um, I am right now going to share with you uh, my screen. Just give me a short moment. And, uh, pa -pa -pam. Responses. Ah, okay. So here we have the. Uh, let me move it further down so you will be able to see or even here okay okay here we have the amount of people who have placed their bets today uh, and yeah basically as we know team kitten have won so we need to eliminate few of you guys unfortunately so koshmar uh, it's adam goodness as well going out so we have five people who have entered the betting? Sorry, who have entered the betting? Uh, why the misclicks combo? Why five people who have entered the uh, betting have correctly predicted that Team Kitten will won? So let me transpose the um, the names over here. Or actually, yeah, this is the. This is the Twitch names, bam, and then I need to copy the name and add at the end a space. This is just for the uh, software I will be using, uh -huh, not plus, but end, yes. I, it's like, I'm very, whatever, cannot focus today too much. Sorry for that, guys, but usually I'm the uh, maestro uh, of the Excel, but today not so much, so yeah. So basically, here we have five players who have predicted correctly and I have added also a space at the end of their nickname. Right now I will be copying these five players to the tool I'm using to make a lottery. I'm adding manually you guys. And yes, so we have Avenger, After, Cure, Silver and Vanblade. And double checking, this is exactly the same list of people who predicted that Team Kitten will win. So. Out of you guys, let's see who will win. And remember, today uh, I will be just doing the lottery. There is no need to confirm. Uh, that's why I asked for Discord ID. I will send you um, price via Discord. So let's see who will win today. High chance, you see? Only five people predicted correctly. So guys, there is a high chance to one out of five. Like you have 20% to win. In which competition you have 20% to win? Come on, which lottery gives you that high chance of, uh, of winning? After for the next Sundays, let's see. For now, sure, sure, after, after, one blade, Avenger, Silver, Avenger. Avenger! Avenger to create. Congratulations, my friend. You have successfully won the tournament. You have won the XP boost for the units. And uh, yeah. I guess that's pretty much it for today. I will send you the prize shortly. You can PM me on the Discord just to make sure. And uh, congratulations, one more. So, oh, Avenger uh, 1645. I will write to you on Discord later on. Yeah. Guys, congratulations to the winners of the lottery. Congratulations to the team who won today. I mean, it was very, very nice, interesting games. 
I will lottery. Lottery, yeah, lottery just just go. Yeah, sorry. I am really out of out of focus today fully. So uh, yeah, still still getting back, recovering fully to uh, back to health. Still on a lot of meds, so yeah, but you know. Someone has to cast, right, and uh, provide you with amazing uh, tournaments and amazing, you know, content and whatnot. So, why should I uh, put my health and well-being in front of your, uh, you guys, and, and your uh, good, good fun every Sunday, right? So, can do it. Can do this. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, please come again. Please come again next Sunday. We are starting the stream same time. So half past one CET, so like Warsaw and, and most Europe time. Uh, exclamation mark help if you need some more information about the tournament, about the rules, about whatnot. Everything can be found on our official tournament Discord. And uh, yeah, have a nice Sunday. There is still a few hours of the Sunday left, left, so enjoy. And you can expect much more coming in this uh, weekend. I will be uploading the replies uh, of the of the games uh, to the youtube so i will be posting those as well around so make sure to check them and rewatch if you would like to thank you very much enjoy your sunday bye bye